I'm Vicki Wynn. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential Summer Safety Edition. Now we're going to talk about keeping safe this summer, but we're also going to tell you how to save on summer essentials. With inflation reaching record levels, we'll give you some tips to make your money work. But first, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says drownings usually spike during the summer, but these accidents are preventable. Here are some simple reminders. The unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 900 kids die each year from drowning in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages 1 to 4. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donohue. She's the Senior Aquatics Director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips. It takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface. There are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water. Okay, I have my three girls waiting, eager to get into the pool, so let's go. We are all suited up, ready to go. Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her, it's 30 to 50 pounds. You wanna make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good? Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. You want to make sure that they can independently submerge in the water. When they come back up, that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. that's not uh, really into being in the pool. And that's fine. Just let them be comfortable in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in. Having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through and you wanna make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times. Tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. Now, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue can kick in. So set a timer to remind everyone to take a break and importantly, hydrate. With more on summer safety, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Beth. So Dr. Azar, let's talk about heat exhaustion. Yes. Let's get an idea of like, what are some of the warning signs we should be watching out for? So the number one thing, Vicki, is that people can either pass out or they have a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Most of us don't have a digital thermometer on board, so others signs and symptoms to look for would be uh, confusion, headache, lightheadedness, dry skin. People think a lot, well, if you're overheated, you're going to be sweating a lot. Mm. No, people who have heat exhaustion will actually have very red, very hot, very dry skin. Couple That's a very good clue. For. Okay, so if you see someone who is experiencing that, what should you do? So the first thing to do is move them into a cool area. So a shady area under a tree, air conditioning if you can. We have some props with us yeah. here. If you have the, um, uh, if you're near ice packs, let's say you're at a picnic yeah. or something okay. like that, the places to put them under the neck, under the arm, in the groin, those are areas where a lot of blood vessels, that can start okay. to cool the temperature down. A big misconception is that you put people in an ice bath. Uh -huh. We don't want you doing that unless it was someone who has exertional exhaustion, meaning like a, a, an athlete who did a vigorous workout. Mm -hmm. They can go in an ice tub. Nobody else should go into an ice tub. And call 911. You should actually do that before you start initiating first aid because it is a medical emergency. Okay, that's good to know. So let's talk about prevention. How do you prevent yourself from becoming overheated? Well, it's really about dehydration. Mm -hmm. So obviously, 
sun exposure is the big one. And I think people often think, well, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and a lot of fluids, and that certainly can be beneficial. But you can also eat foods that have a lot or a high water content. Yeah. We're talking strawberries, uh -huh. peaches, lettuce in salads, watermelon, yeah. celery, cucumbers. What to avoid? Alcohol is a big one. Alcohol definitely dehydrates. And we have here our good old... Yeah, what about show. coffee? So we did think for a long time that caffeine acted as what's called a diuretic, uh -huh. meaning that it made you pee a lot yes. and that you would lose fluid that way. You really can't dehydrate yourself with caffeinated beverages really? on their own. Right. So if you're drinking an iced coffee, there's a lot of water in there too. So that's you okay. Enjoy your caffeinated beverages, but just keep an, keep an eye on how much you're sweating and how much you're taking in. And make sure you drink more water for alcohol. That's like an important rule, right? <laughs> okay. Alcohol in the sun is just a big no-no. I know. And, but that it mixes a lot during the summer. So people got to pay really attention. Does. Let's talk careful. about this, the debate over spray sunscreen versus cream sunscreen. Yes. Is there a difference and is one better than the other? Right. So if you ask, most dermatologists will say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you actually apply. And mm. you know this, mm -hmm. Vic, my kids are a little older now, yeah. but trying to have your fidgety kids stay still to apply lotion is not that easy. Right. So for a lot of us moms and uh, dads out there, it is easier to spray. Okay. Spray is fine as long as the spray is actually getting onto the skin. So be aware of, of wind and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like to apply the spray and then make sure that you rub it in, but it's just as good SPF 30 or above. Okay. Reapply every two hours. Reapply, especially if you're doing vigorous exercise and, and sweating. sweating or mm -hmm. swimming. Every time you come out of the pool, you have to reapply and let it sink in for about 15 or 20 minutes before and you go back in the sun. If you're spraying, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated spot. In a, a well-ventilated spot, yes. Okay, and I want to mention, obviously, you talked about you have we have hats, and of course, that sun protective clothing is important, too. Very, and you want to do, generally speaking, like colored light, okay. weight, hats, that kind of thing. If you can look through the piece of clothing, that's not thick enough, oh, right? You want to be able to, it's okay. like you want it to be more opaque, mm -hmm. light colored and light, but still that you can't see the light through it. Then you know you're pretty well covered. Dr. Natalie Azar, you are the best. Thank you Thank for covering you so sun safety for having with us. us. Good to see you. All right, well, still to come from grilling to fireworks, hacks to keep your family safe all season long, and later, save or splurge, how to stretch your dollars on summer necessities. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Whoa. You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. You all love Al Roker. <laughs> holidays, 4th of July, but before you do anything, some must-see safety tips and hacks to make sure everyone has a great time while staying safe. It's the 4th of July, and that means summer. Time to head outside and enjoy the weather. And if you're like me, there will be a lot of grilling happening in your house, but are you using one of these to clean your grates? Well, the metal bristles work great for cleaning, but they can also come out of the brush and get stuck in your food. So here is a fantastic alternative, an onion. Yeah, an onion. 
Check it out. It works really well to get all that gunk off of the grates. And if you don't have an onion, another quick, easy trick, aluminum foil. Just take a ball and get to scrubbing. Also, as you're getting ready to grill that meat, make sure you keep it refrigerated. The USDA says anything that's uncooked left out for more than an hour in this summer weather could make you sick. Serving adult beverages at the party? I like to use two different color cups, red ones for the grown-ups and the alcoholic beverages, blue ones for the kid-friendly drinks. There you go, ask me. That way, there is no confusion. And it just wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. If you're heading out to a big show, it's gonna be amazing. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna be loud. And if you are bringing your little ones, don't forget the ear protection. I like these ones, they go over the ears just like this. Jay's helping us out. Those feel okay, Jay? Awesome. And if you can't find those in time, well, these work just as well, the traditional earplugs. Now let's talk about the at-home fireworks. So much fun, but they can also be incredibly dangerous. So before you light off those one, two, three goes or the rainbow shower, wow, this brings me back. Make sure you've done your homework. Fire extinguisher at the ready, have it out, know how to use it. And don't forget, sparklers, very fun, but even something as small as this can start a big fire. So have the bucket of water ready and when everything's done, extinguish it and you're safe. And of course, check to see if it's legal to light fireworks where you live. Here's a great tip for when you venture out into the crowds for fireworks. Use a temporary tattoo with your name and phone number so if your child gets lost, someone can call you right away. And you can get this temporary tattoo paper online, print it out at home, that's what I did. You don't have time for that. Permanent marker works just as well. Pool parties are always fun, but here's some tips. Be sure to designate a responsible and sober adult. I'll take that, thank you, to watch the pool. As an additional safety measure, there's a number of high-tech tools that can help you in case of a potential pool safety incident. There's this bracelet by Safety Turtle, and it will sound an alarm the second your kid hits the water. And this is super loud. There's no way you're gonna miss this alarm. And it works for your pets too if your dog is not a strong swimmer, right, Peanut? And you've definitely heard this before, but don't forget about the sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen about every hour. We all have our phones with us all the time. Just set a timer, easy reminder. And a great rule of thumb for exactly how much sunscreen to use, the experts recommend a shot glass full. But really, you can never get too much. And just a reminder, every year animal shelters see an influx of pets who get spooked by the fireworks and run off. So make sure those tags on your pets are updated with your correct phone number and address. And also just keep your pets inside during the fireworks. All right, when we come back, your summer shopping guide, where to find the deals and later how to host the hottest summer get togethers. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all.
We are back with our Consumer Confidential telling you what to buy in the month of June and what you may want to skip to save some money. So here to break it down is our senior investigative and consumer correspondent, Vicki Wynn. Vicki, good morning. Good morning, guys. So they say June is a good time to buy for dads, yes. graduates. Is that true? I First of all, yes, and also, Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Father's Day. See, see that, that reaction? Oh, oh, right. yeah. oh, it's Father's Day. Who produced this segment? Greeny didn't oh, put that on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what else is modestly priced right now? Okay, we'll talk about dads and grads. Let's start with grads. Craig, you wanted to ask, is cash okay? Cash is always okay. Yes. I think we got to transition you and wean you off of gift cards. And the reason why, there's $21 billion in unused gift cards right now sitting mm. in American households. $21 cash, billion? Cash always gets spent. $21 billion. I the average that. person sitting on $175 in gift cards. Mm -hmm. So if you want to give cash to grads, they're always going to be able to use it. If you have a grad that's really into DIY, summer is the time when everybody's getting out there doing those projects themselves, dads as well. So tools and gadgets tend to go on sale. Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Sears, those are all great places to find all of those little things that you need or a tool set, a tool box this time of year is great. The other thing that goes on sale in June is athletic apparel because mm. January is the big push, new year, new you. June, the weather is great again, yeah. so look for uh, Adidas, Nike, okay. Puma, the typical places, but also lots of deals, buy one, uh, buy more, save more type deals at places like JCPenney and Kohl's on shorts, tank tops, all the things you need for that summer refresh. I hear some people are training for a marathon, so this is a good time for you, Chanel. Oh, there you go, yes. get some new sneakers. And then think about it, you're outside, so first aid supplies, go and check that kit in your car, in your medicine oh, cabinet, make sure everything is, is fresh, up to date, the band-aids are still sticky. Amazon last year had 50% off of band-aids and Neosporin and all that good stuff, so you want the, those things on hand for all right, sunburns so, and bites. So what are some of the big sales, big ticket items going on? Okay, so Bath and Body Works, they, they call it the queen of June sales because that's when you get all your lotions, your potions, your soaps out. This is the time to stock up. Body Shop also huh. does a sale up to 75% off oh, Bath wow. & Body Works. And the hack from the crazy coupon lady is if you sign up for the email, you'll get those coupons mailed to you. That's typically a sale that's better to do in store because those items are heavy. So if you have to pay for shipping or a minimum purchase, you'll get better deals in store. Okay. All right, uh, video games is the next one. 90% right. off of PC games. Oh. Steam and GOG look for deals starting mid-June and late June that go into July. Humble Bundle and Ubisoft. I think they're trying to get people from outside to come back inside, so oh. this is the time. Up to 90% off of those, oh. those computer games. And then pet supplies for Pepper and oh. my dog Moose. Chewy has their What's your dog's name? His Moose. His name is Moose. He's, he's little, but you know, big but and But mighty. Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> tiny but mighty. Um, pet supplies. Chewy has their huge sale in June, up to 50% off, not just for dogs and cats, fish, reptiles, that guinea okay. pig you've always wanted. Oh, right? yes. And the farm animals as well. All right, finally, are there some items that maybe aren't uh, a good time to buy? I guess they're most affordable at this moment. Yes, you want to hold off. If you haven't gotten your air conditioner for the summer, this is not a great time to get it. They're going to go on sale again July, August, September. Brand name clothing, if you're into it, Nordstrom has its big anniversary sale. Okay. The previews start June 29th, it's, uh, but you want to wait until July 15th because that's when the sale actually kicks in. Mm. For anything that's high-end, brand name, that's when you're going to see the big sales. And then on your bigger ticket Amazon devices. Like Alexa? Like Alexa, Echoes, those kinds Got of it. things. Prime Day is coming, Christmas oh, in July. Right. Trey Bodge, our smart shopping expert, predicts it'll be the second week of July, so don't buy that right now. But if you want to get your dad a tablet or some kind of device, mm -hmm. this could be a good time for Father's All Day. Right. Thank you, thanks so much. We love our dads. This morning on today's checklist, we are focusing on summer medical travel safety as we enter prime vacation season with all the time and, and energy that we spend planning the actual trip. It's a good idea to prepare for injuries and illnesses as well. So we brought in an expert, Dr. Kavita Agarwal is a board certified in internal medicine. Dr. Kavita, good to have you good back. Good morning. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh -huh. So before we hop on that plane or hop yeah. on that train or hop in the car, you yeah. say that it's a good idea to talk to a, a doctor and our pharmacist. Why? Absolutely, because think about this, you want to have a summer vacation without getting sick, right? We want to have a fun time. So what I would recommend is checking with your doctor first. Okay. And what they can do is just make sure that you're up to date with your routine vaccines, like the flu and the tetanus shot. And then also your childhood vaccines. You want to make sure that you're up to date with your chicken pox and your polio, mumps, measles, rubella, because there are some areas around the world that have pockets of those infections, and that way you'll be safe and protected. I'm looking, go ahead. I was going to say, and also with your pharmacist, you 
can ask for certain kinds of prescriptions? Um, yeah, they can give you some recommendations, you know, for over-the-counter meds, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think when you speak with your doctor first, they will review which country you're traveling to, okay. and they will review the CDC's recommendations just to make sure that if there are any infections that are brewing in that pocket of the world, that you are safe. So, like, if you're going to the tropical areas, you may want to take bug spray to prevent mosquito-borne infections mm -hmm. like chikungunya, Zika, dengue, malaria, or even Ooh. antibiotics. All of those mm -hmm. things. Yes. I'm looking at this next um, uh, this next list here about what kind of documents you need. And I have to be honest, before you travel, things I haven't really thought about, like bringing some of your health documents. Yeah, you so if you have any important health documents, make a copy. It's so easy these days. You have a phone, you can take a picture of it, bring it with you. Um, things such as your COVID vaccine cards or some countries that may still require that. Um, and if you take any regularly prescribed medicines, your doctor can actually prepare a health summary that includes your medical diagnoses, your surgery, right, your medication. Right, in the allergies. language where you go. Yes, yes, not just in English, but in the language of the country that you're traveling That's to. so right. interesting. Yes, and your doctor can review your meds just to make sure that they're approved in the country you're traveling I will tell to. you, if you've ever had to go to the hospital or go to a doctor in an emergency in another yeah. country, I had to do that once. It's scary. It is You don't scary. really have, you think you can just pull out your insurance card. It no, just doesn't work that way. No. So on that note, you say yes. to consider yes. traveler's health insurance. Absolutely, because the insurance that you buy here doesn't really typically cover care abroad. Yeah. And if you buy it, then at least you'll have affordable health care while traveling. And I've also understood that sometimes you might want to, depending on where you're going, you might want to think about evacuation insurance as well because and usually that's covered with your travel insurance mm -hmm. good yeah, good deal absolutely. masks have been some people are wearing them mm -hmm. I've been traveling a lot some people aren't what is your rule with that and some other general rules I think now it becomes a personal decision talk with your doctor about it I think if you have chronic conditions that put you at risk for respiratory illnesses and complications you may want to still wear the mask when you're indoors and in close quarters but people say when you walk on the plane and when you walk off is when you should wear it but when actually you're sitting on the plane because of the filter it's oh actually the filters are really good the air circulation is good, it really reduces the risk of infection. Okay. Absolutely. What are some other general rules? Um, so if you're going on a long journey, um, something that is like a very long car, plane, train ride, sitting for prolonged periods can cause your blood to pool in your legs and you could be at higher risk of blood clots. So the way to prevent that is get up like every two hours or so mm -hmm. and stretch out those calf muscles, go for a walk. Um, also you want to stay hydrated because it's summertime, right? Yeah. You could be out in the sun, you're on the beach, going for a hike, stay hydrated. Um, skip risky foods. Mm, um, yeah. If you're going to be in an area where you don't know about the water, if it's safe, yeah. mm. I say you stick to bottled water, mm -hmm. skip the ice. We've all been yeah. there. Oh my yeah. gosh, you oh don't yeah. want to be sick while on vacation. <laughs> it's good. Um, wash those hands too. Wash those yeah. hands, yeah. skip right. the street foods. Long absolutely. flights I wear up. Compression side. Oh, they help. They yeah. help. Definitely. That's, that's yeah, helped absolutely. Because well, then I've had blood clots. Yeah. So, yeah. what about what are some of the uh, the over-the-counter medicines we should be bringing with us? And I definitely recommend taking them from here. Because once I was in Paris, my son got sick. We went in, and everything's in French, and you don't, yeah. don't even know what's yeah. what. So you want to have meds that you know and are comfortable with. So the things that I pack and like to take with me are motion sickness meds, your anti-diarrheals, your cold and flu meds, um, pain relievers, things. cold um, sleep aids. You know, because mm -hmm. especially in a it's very hard yeah. to sleep. Sure. And if you got a, a red eye, you want to be refreshed the next day. Um, and also going back to the bug spray, you want to choose something that is EPA registered and that way you know it works. And sunscreen, don't forget yeah. the sunscreen. Yeah. 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 This makes your trip a little always. smoother, and, you know, yeah. when you have these things. Yes. Good yes. Advice. And also with the over-the-counter meds, the nice thing is that if you're trying to take your carry-on mm -hmm. and not, you know, bring a checked-in luggage, they come in these foil packs that are slim yes. and then you can avoid the liquids and just oh. stick to the tablets so Thank you don't you. get stuck at security. Well, coming up, hacks to make the most out of summer from staying cool to being the hostess with the mostest. Consumer Confidential is coming right back.
right, now that we know how to stay safe and what to buy and when to buy it, let's take things to the next level and make the most of what summer has to offer with hacks for staying cool and how to host the hottest get together. Melanie Berlier, the Spruce Group General Manager, she's here now to help us maximize our summer. Okay, welcome Melanie, I'm gonna bring us over here. Start off with uh, talking to us about these products and how can they help us with our summer plans. There are so many underrated ways to beat the heat this summer. When it comes to energy efficiency, one of the simplest things you can do is swap out all of your old bulbs oh. for the newer ones because they're more energy efficient mm -hmm. and they're not going to emit any heat throughout your home. Nice, so you save money on the bill and they're cooler. What about these devices here? The so the dehumidifier comes in handy because your air conditioning unit is working really, really hard to cool the air and remove moisture from the air. But if you have a dehumidifier on site, the air conditioner isn't going to have to work as hard. Nice, oh, I love that. Okay, and then finally, talk to us about the pillow and sheets here. Sure, so bedding is super important when it comes to your temperature control, mm -hmm. which impacts your quality of sleep. Yes. With a cooling pillow, you're actually going to remove heat from your body and get a better night's rest during like summer. that. Yeah, it's so important to sleep yeah. with a cool pillow. And with the spruce, we recommend really lightweight, 100% cotton sheets for the summer months. Okay, excellent. All right, my family loves to be outside. We can't wait to get out there, use our backyard. Tell us about different things that we can do to stay cool, stay hydrated, and have a good time. Sure, so a DIY bar cart is one of our favorite oh, things. Oh, that's a great idea. It's so easy to do, and it's a fan favorite. So you just need, in addition to the bar cart, you need a beverage dispenser mm -hmm. to display your batch cocktail of choice. Mm -hmm. You need super durable tumblers. Forget glass outdoors, please. Yeah. It's much safer to go with a durable plastic. And then you're going to want an ice bucket. If you're feeling next level, throw some succulents on there and a bowl of lemons and limes. And staying hydrated is important. So getting a big size, getting everyone the liquids that they need. All right. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about staying safe when you're in the sun. We talked about sunscreen earlier, and I think that's so vital. Yeah. One of our favorite things is that we recommend a sun protection station. Mm. You're going to want to include sun hats, sunglasses, and sun screen that your family members or visitors can choose from. Okay, and then finally the sun goes down, you still want the party to continue. That's kind of the most fun because then it's cooler. Yes. What are some things to help us get through the summer nights? So we love lighting, wicker lanterns, string lights are beautiful, but when it comes to insects, uh -huh. an insect yes. repelling candle is going to do double duty as both a source of warm cozy vibes and a bug repellent. Okay, and you know what we did? We bought one of those giant outdoor fans which really helps to keep the bugs away as well. Yes, those are a great idea too. I love this wicker lamp. All right, Melanie, what about outdoor movies? That's becoming more and more popular. Backyard movie theaters are so easy to create and they're fun for literally everyone of all ages. All you need are a screen, mm -hmm. a projector, an audio system, a content source, and a few cables and wires. <laughs> You're like, all you need are these seven things, <laughs> but they're, they're pretty affordable these days, yes? They really are, and aside from the technical, Aspects, all you want to think about are food, seating, and maybe some mosquito netting. But Definitely. Everyone has fun in a backyard movie theater moment. Melanie Berlier, thank you so much. So appreciate you. Thank you for having me. All right, well, that is our time for all of us here at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wynn. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. In the meantime, stay safe and cool. is shining and we fired up the grill y'all join me jocelyn delk adams for a summer barbecue to remember as a chef and cookbook author i love to add a modern twist to classic recipes with my tips you can host the outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune bringing all of your loved ones together it makes the day that much sweeter Booze, this party's going to be epic Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like 
a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people want to get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really wanna knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice Nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. 
The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well. And you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. 
And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini, and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve, and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it, we can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings up more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water, I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt. And then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, 
under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard bowl. And we're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. And then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kind of mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. 
This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale and I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of the same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle during the summer? So I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill. It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. My first two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate, and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Janelle, we met each other working together ages ago, and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> my last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. Mom, so good to see you. I'm ready to eat. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Let's make our way to the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main Woo! event. Simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you 
left Cinco de potato salad. Well, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. So look, mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it. <laughs> over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. Oh, and my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this. Nope, needs more of this. See, before it went into the book, they were still nervous about it. I was right. like, it's we going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But Regardless. it's gonna hit. Everyone has loved it. Great. Right. Like, you did your thing, Joshua. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. Yeah. Got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities. And you can ask all of us yes or no questions, so you can guess who the celebrity is that you ask. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. And he got. Emmy, Grammy, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that, <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink Woo. lemonade. Delicious. Cheers. <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet because we are going to get on the dance floor. Oh, okay. Let's bust a move. Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website. It is the first day of summer, and today we have all the inspiration you need to get you outside so you can enjoy some fun in the sun. Up first, we are taking the scenic route as NBC's Gotti Schwartz joins one conservationist 
on his epic trek across the country. Let's see what this trailblazer is all about. To say ultra hiker Rue McKinrick has a thirst for adventure would be an understatement. Do you run across a lot of like dangerous animals? I had a mountain lion that was continuing to come into camp and I felt the need at some point just to pack up and walk through the night. Because whoa, whoa, I, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, hold yeah. on, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. You decided to pack up yeah. and then walk into the darkness? Yeah, I felt like I'd make it on my terms. But that is the price you pay when you have a dream as big as his. You see, Rue's on a mission to pave the way for the greatest trail America has ever seen, a 14,000-mile American perimeter trail. Think the Pacific Crest Trail, made famous by Reese Witherspoon in Wild. Oh, my God. What? But the APT would be over five times longer, circumnavigating the entire U.S., a track that took him three years to complete the first time he did it. In some ways, I got the easy part out of the way already. Walking all around the United <laughs> yeah, States. The hard part now, doing it again to lay the groundwork for what he hopes could be a national trail system in the future. We have a highway system, and you can drive across the country if you, if you like. I think it's reasonable that we also have trails that mimic that kind of system. To connect us. To connect us. And when it finally came time for us to part ways, the sheer magnitude of his dream came into view. I've never ended an interview like this, but I guess it was goodbye, right? I think this is the end of the road. I'm headed to the car. You're literally headed to Oregon. Yeah, I'm just going to start walking that <laughs> way. <laughs> Maybe I'll beat you there. Rue McKinrick, a man who doesn't mind taking the long way home. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, San Jacinto, California, 900 miles away from Bend. This next woman used nature to help her own healing, but when she started a Facebook group to get other women outdoors, she never imagined how her small idea would end up changing the lives in some big ways. Take a look. If you are on the water and you can really immerse yourself and it feels like as if you're this little ant on this big body of water. It feels very liberating. Tanya Walker knows the joys of kayaking and she's made it her purpose to share it. All the first time kayakers! Woo! As the founder of Black Women Who Kayak in Austin, Texas, Tanya hosts events for women to connect with one another and with nature. I have never before kayaked in my life until this group. It's Tanya's way of giving back to a community that's given her so much. After a divorce in 2005 left her and her two young sons without a home, she turned to the Austin Shelter for Women and Children. When I was in the lowest point of my life, my community helped me and my boys. So it's important for me to give back to my community. As she got back on her feet, she found spending time outdoors to be healing. So in 2018, she decided to share that experience with others. For African-American culture, one of the things is we don't do certain things. It's not the fact that we don't do certain things, but it's why we don't do these things. The barriers of not feeling welcome or when it comes to water is not knowing how to swim or being afraid of big bodies of water. Tanya tackled these barriers head on. She partnered with local businesses to offer swimming lessons and hosted outdoor activities like hiking and canyoneering to spark interest in nature. I took advantage of the opportunity to take some swimming lessons before I actually had my first kayaking event. And then once I was on the water, I just immediately fell in love with it. The spaces that you don't see us or you rarely see us, those are the areas that I want to address and I want to make sure that, you know, those spaces are welcoming. The group has grown to more than 2,000 members across eight chapters in the U.S. And now the group does more than just kayak. She recently changed the name to Black Women Who. It could be scary at times doing something that you've never done before, but the cool thing is is that you're not doing it alone. You're doing it with somebody else who looks like you, but are also probably doing it the first time as well. To get the word out, Tanya wrote about the group for Soul City magazine. It was a move that proved life-changing for Heath Creech, the magazine's publisher. In our first and second conversation, I mentioned kind of casually that um, I was on dialysis because I have kidney failure. And she said, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to donate an organ. Wait, what? When he told me what he was on dialysis, that conversation just got fueled and then it started, I just started thinking about, hey, 
I could, I could help and, and be a, a kidney donor for him. She went through the testing process and they were a match. Heath and Tanya underwent surgery in January 2023, just six months after meeting for the first time. The operation was a success. This is definitely a lifelong connection. Tanya, she is just a natural born, giving, kind hearted, loving kind of person. Six weeks post op, Tanya is back on the water for the first time at the Texas Rowing Center, leading the largest group of women she's hosted on the Colorado River. So, is this your first time kayaking? Awesome. I love what Tanya has put together. It gives me the ability to connect with other black women and be outdoors. I was able to turn my passion, which is kayaking, into my purpose to take other women on the water to have that same feeling that I get. That's been the most empowering part of this whole journey. Up next, you can't talk summer without mentioning camps. We're going to take you to a few inspiring options coming up right after the break. Tis the season for summer camp, and for these kids in Rhode Island, that means Shark Camp. It's an amazing program giving high school students a hands-on experience to learn all about these amazing creatures. Who's ready to see some sharks? Welcome to the Captain Burnt. This is a URI's research vessel. On this day, we've joined 13 high school students on a high seas adventure, all here for the University of Rhode Island's shark camp. What color are blue sharks? What color are blue sharks? It's a week-long deep dive into the world of marine biology. At the helm of this hands-on class, Professor Brad Weatherby. Their shells are made of calcium. It's one of the Who usually spends his time with college students in the classroom. Some of them never been on a boat, some of them never been fishing. Some of them have never been to the ocean before, if you can believe that. And this is called the? This is the Ocean State, Rhode Island. The journey begins in Wickford, Rhode Island, as the fishing trawler heads out on Narragansett Bay. All right, let's set her in. The crew drops the research vessel's yeah. huge net and they begin dragging for sea life. We're in about 60 feet of water and the net is probably about 300 feet behind the boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It's natural for students to fear a jaw-sized shark, but a great white will not make an appearance this day. Catch includes all types of sea creatures, and yes, sharks. Oh my God! But a kinder, gentler, almost toothless variety. This is a dogfish shark. A shark. Yes. And you're holding a shark. Yes. Oh my God. And you're completely cool with that. Yes. Because? Because they don't hurt humans, and they're very small, and they're actually surprisingly docile and shy. You can stick your finger in their mouth, and they really don't hurt. Wow. Look at that. Well, these are my favorites. Whenever we pick them up. It feels like sandpaper. Oh, it does. It like sandpaper. I'll call him Sparky. Bye. The kids turned scientists now have a mission, 
first to sort the catch. This one's the crustacean bucket. All right, who knows what this it. is? A striped. A striped sea robin. Who wants to hold it? This is an American lobster. This is a clear nose skate. If you look at this nose, you can see right through it. It's like a little window. What's this big vein called? This vein? This thing, that's part of their skeleton. Their body cavity is right in there. And next, they measure the sharks. 29 inches. That's a big one. I've named him William. Guiding the students on their newfound discoveries, Mary Carmen Serna, an undergrad URI marine biology major. Do you remember a moment when you had that look on your face, that aha? Uh -huh. A hundred percent. I mean, they get so excited when the trawl comes up to see all the fish, to get hands on, you know, and see what field work is actually like. Now, had you ever seen escape? Whoa! <laughs> the camp is about windows to worlds the kids might otherwise never see. Awesome. There you go. Congratulations. This is something I've always wanted to do, but I want to do it even more after this. As the day concludes, all the fish are carefully released back to their undersea homes. And this is the last dogfish shark that's now going to be released into the wild. There we go. What do you guys all think of shark camp now? Now, let's head to an awesome summer camp on Long Island here in New York. It's called Camp Anchor. It's for kids with special needs, and you can immediately feel the love and joy, not just from the campers, but also from the staff and volunteers who make it happen year after year. Take a look. Good morning, everyone. If you've ever spent a day at Camp Anchor, describing it comes easy. The greatest place on earth. Love. Camp Anchor is happy. If you can't already tell, there's an energy in the air, an infectious spirit. The minute the children and the adults get off the bus, it's it's pure joy. Yeah, I swear! They can let their guard down. They can just be themselves. They have different disabilities, but the abilities, they shine. Camp Anchor staff and its 275 volunteers Let's go, Joe. spend their six weeks of summer leading and teaching over 750 campers, all with special needs. This is my 32nd summer. What do you love about it? Uh, it's the kids. It's just coming down here and seeing their smiles that really kind of change your, your perspective of things, makes you realize what's important. What's the age range of campers? Um, six to whenever. Look, he's like, he's a hug. You can stay until you want. Give me an idea of day to day, what happens here? You can have dance, you have sports, fitness, drama, home ec. Anchor has been serving this Long Island, New York community for over 50 years. It's a special bond here, and it truly is, and in the words of these campers, a magical place to be. And its heart lies with its campers, like 11-year-old Gavin Sands, who was born with Down syndrome. Gavin is truly our greatest joy. He's our fourth child. Camp Anchor is a place where I know that he's safe He's given so many opportunities to shine and to build his confidence. We feel happy, we feel blessed and grateful. The things he does here empowers him to, to see that he can, he can do anything. And for the Sands, Camp Anchor is a family affair. I've been working here for six years. This is my second summer here. This is my first summer. What is it like when you see your brother at camp? I love seeing Gavin at camp. I always run up to him and give him a hug. It's so nice to be in a place where we're all together and Gavin's so accepted and it's so inclusive. This camp inspires so many people to like go into the special education field as their profession. I'm actually becoming a special education teacher, so I want to be here literally for the rest of my life. When Gavin comes home and you say, okay, tell me about your day today at Camp Anchor, what's a typical response? I have the best day ever, and that's every day days that Gavin and his volunteer buddy Katya enjoy. Can I hang with you? Yes. Let's go. Filled with music. Get your jumps up. Some animal yoga. <laughs> and the main event, surfing. How do you feel when you're on the surfboard? I feel happy. To know that your son has a place like this to go to, what does that mean to you both? 
It's like he's, he's family from the very day he got here. It's like him being home. I mean, this is home for them. Anchor is my second family. Yeah, nice work! You come here and you just have that feeling of, I'm accepted. You know, I'm allowed to be here. There's a quote when you come in that reads, to the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. And I think that just captures the essence of this beautiful camp that allows these campers to form incredible friendships, not only with other campers, but with the staff, the volunteers, the administration. And they form these friendships and memories that they'll treasure forever. Oh, we love to see those happy campers. Just ahead, the Today Show team heads out for a little summertime fun. That's right after the break. We're back on the boost, and if you're looking for a new hobby this summer, pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the country. The number of courts more than tripling in the last 10 years, and our Today Show team headed out for a mostly friendly competition in our first ever Today Show pickleball tournament. Let's take a look. I like a sport where you could do it barefoot while holding a rosé. That's my kind of sport. The closest thing to pickleball that I've ever done is when I'm done making my Bloody Mary, I put a pickle right on in the middle there. I have never played pickleball, but I think I would love it because it has all the things I love. I love tennis, I love ping pong. It's right in between. It's true, pickleball is a cross between tennis, ping pong, and badminton. Players use paddles and a wiffle ball. The court is smaller than a tennis court and you serve underhanded. Players are supposed to stay out of the kitchen, an area right near the net. I've never held a racket. No skills, all heart. That's all Can't you Can't lose, baby. I've never played pickleball before. I don't have any athleticism, so I'm very intimidated right now. I'm excited. Chanel Jones and Carson Jones, that's my middle name. Uh, are going to be a great team today. It's just sort of an easy, accessible, fun, lighthearted sport to play, and you can play it at any age. I always love a sport where they say, oh, and you know what? Oh, you nice little old person, you can play this. You'll barely know that you're moving. Pickleball is sweeping the nation. Pickleball has been around since the 60s, and in the last decade, the game has been a hit among seniors. But now the pickleball craze is attracting fans of all ages. There's even a magazine dedicated to the sport. Its publisher, Wayne Dollard, runs pickleball camps in over 100 cities around the country, including this one in St. George, Utah. 
There is a huge pickleball boom going on. Last year, the numbers came in at four and a half million now. It's not just fun, it's a heart healthy activity that lowers blood pressure and strengthens agility. And it's extremely social. Wait for it. Seems like a perfect combo for our Today Show team. So we took a swing at our first Today Pickleball Tournament. Go Team Blue! Hey, Blue Team! I will look out for us, Team Orange. Go Team Orange! Go Team! We're gonna get them. Before Come we on. faced off in doubles matches, a little warm up and some pointers from the pickleball pros here at Court 16. You always have to be back behind this yellow line. This yellow one. It has to be underhand, yes. Okay, so it needs to stay straight. Most games are 11 points, but we're kind of in a pickle with an early wake-up call tomorrow. So our round-robin game is first to score five points. So it's Al and I against pop starters Carson and Chanel. Oh, Ooh, nice, nice depth, Carson. Go, Carson! Come on. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Oh. Oh. You're better than this today. I know, I am. Oh, All right, there we go, there we go. Come on, so, Chanel. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh, wow. That was a good one. That was a good one. We woke the sleeping beast. <laughs> okay, five two. All right. Nice, good game. We'll play, we'll play. Uh, yeah. Let's we'll go, play. partner. No, I want to play. Now I feel like I've got my sea legs. Yeah. Bronze medal. Oh. Or last. Chanel and Carson advance to round two against the fierce fourth hour duo, Hoda and Jenna. Yes. Ooh, is that out? Yes, queen! Good. That's, good. That's, That's how good. you do That's it. That's pretty good. Come on. Oh, good try. It's okay, JBH. Got it in. Go hard. Oh, good try. Good try, oh, Chanel. Oh. Jenna, way to go. See? Yes, yeah. 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 You got Jenna. it, baby. Let's go, Miss Jenna. Oh, yes. oh. You, you got it. Okay. Jenna, got it. Yes, let's go. All right. Feeling it. Oh. Game, 5-1. Darn it. That's it? That was, that was not my high. pop star best. Good game. Good game. Good game. So I got a drink. Oda and Jenna for the W, but it wasn't over you yet. You want two of us? Take you two on. Yeah, right, you should. Okay. We mixed it up, and Jenna and Hoda challenged Carson and me for one more final round. Come on. Yeah, Come on, there you go. Me. Let's go. One ball at a time, baby. We're not dinking around. No, we're not. <laughs> Oh no! Let's I go. Get out of the air! Get out of the air for you. Okay. Come on! Oh no! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh! Wow! A little too much. Go! Ian! Ben. Spanky! I got that one. There you go. Yeah, you, you! You! Yeah. I got it. That I got was it. the best volley oh. yet. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. I got it. Oh, shit! Yes. We won! We won! That's a pop start oh, no. plus, baby! <laughs> hey, guys. Let's, let's have a dink. <laughs> Good one. That's pickleball humor, it's friends. Pickleball joke. Oh. Well, I love Cheers. it. Cheers. 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 Oh, love it. <laughs> Cheers. We've got another fun feel-good story for you coming right after the break.
on the boost, and it's that time of day. We've got your daily morning boost. Take a look. And now the stage is clear for Wyndham Clark. Who takes down all the stars in Los Angeles to win the United States Open. We are back with the star of your morning boost, 29-year-old Wyndham Clark. Carson had to come for this question. Wyndham! Let's go! The golf world by storm. That Would you just take us to that moment, that final putt? You were trying not to cry, and you're trying right yeah, now. I, well, the, I had about a 50-footer before that, and when it stopped up about here, I mean, I did everything I could to not just celebrate then because I knew, you know, I'm not going to, barring something crazy, I wasn't going to miss it. And just sitting there, I'm like, I had so much emotion, and I was trying not to cry, and, and then the putt went in, and, the, you know, the, the emotions came out. So. It's an amazing moment. Thank That's you awesome. for making our Father's Day weekend. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're it was incredible. <laughs> and what a month! I mean, you, uh, you won it's your second win, right? You won yes. in May. I mean, you're, yeah. you're really this is a hot summer for you so far. Yeah, uh, I actually had a, a friend send me a pretty funny text. They said. Uh, Siri, play record year, and that's all he sent to me. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, you're, I mean, you're kind of new on. I mean, this is one of your first events, is it not? Like, uh, yeah. For P, the PGA or the US? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So this is now my, I think, seventh start okay. in a major championship. Um, only third in the US Open, and yeah. so you know, I've tried playing in this thing for since I was like 15 years old. So I've tried so many times. And so to finally get one play in them is awesome, and then now to win it is pretty surreal. One of the things I love about your story, and you said this in the, uh, in the post-match presser, you talked about your mom and how you dedicated the win to her. She died of breast cancer back in 2013. Did you, did you feel her presence with you there on the course throughout the week? Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I haven't felt her presence that much in a long time. And my mom lived in L.A. and where she met my dad, and... Um, I had people throughout the week come up to me and show me pictures, which mm. was so cool. And I didn't even know who the people were. They're like, hey, yeah. I knew your mom. Um, she was so great. And they'd show me pictures when she was in her early 20s and uh, stuff I haven't even seen. And it was like so cool. And it just created this vibe that I was like, man, I really feel the presence of my mom here. Mm. Um, and then as I kept playing and it started turning into a pretty special week, um, definitely on Sunday, I, you know, leaned into that and, mm. and felt her presence. So it was... Uh, you know, like I said, it was very surreal. Well, fan favorite Ricky Fowler was right there, too. And he, you, there's a nice moment I saw a video. What a touch of class uh, from both of you. He yeah. came up to you. What did he say to you? Well, so Ricky, he said a bunch of things. But he honestly said, hey, man, you deserve this. You mm. are a major champion. He goes, enjoy <laughs> it. Um, he's, you know, I've, he's kind of been a little bit of a role model. Um, I went to Oklahoma State. He went to Oklahoma State. And he would come back and talk to us. And, you know, someone I was like, man, I want to be like Ricky someday. Yeah. And so... <laughs> One, to be out there with him is really cool, and then to play with him on Sunday, and then now to be a major champion, it's just, wow. um, you know, and he's a class act. He's one of the best. Wyndham! Wyndham! Let it go! Congratulations. Congratulations. It's Wyndham. just the beginning. Thank you for joining us on this first official day of summer. Now let's all get outside and get some sunshine and fresh air. We'll see you next time right here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today.
I'm Vicki Wynn. Thanks for joining us for Consumer Confidential Summer Safety Edition. Now we're going to talk about keeping safe this summer, but we're also going to tell you how to save on summer essentials. With inflation reaching record levels, we'll give you some tips to make your money work. But first, the Consumer Product Safety Commission says drownings usually spike during the summer, but these accidents are preventable. Here are some simple reminders. The unmistakable sound of summer. Kids playing in the pool. But without proper attention, fun can quickly take a tragic turn. On average, more than 900 kids die each year from drowning in the U.S. Drowning is the leading cause of unintentional death among kids ages 1 to 4. And it's not just pools you need to be worried about. Ponds like this and other natural bodies of water can also lure kids. So we brought in Mary O'Donoghue. She's the Senior Aquatics Director at the YMCA to talk to us about some basic summer safety tips. It takes as little as 20 seconds for someone to go under the water and not be able to get back to the surface. There are some basic tips that you can evaluate uh, how your children are comfortable in the water. Okay, I have my three girls waiting eager to get into the pool, so let's go. We are all suited up, ready to go. Emmy and Odessa, they're older, they know how to swim. Renly does not know how to swim yet, and this would be their first swim of the season, so what should we be doing right now? We're gonna look for a Coast Guard approved life jacket for non-swimmers, and you're also looking at the weight category. So this looks like it will fit her, it's 30 to 50 pounds. Okay. You wanna make sure it fits snugly. How does that feel, Boo? Good? Next, the big girls are up for a quick water competency check. You want to make sure that they can independently submerge in the water. When they come back up, that they can turn around and look to see where the safest place is to get out or grab a hold of and be able to climb out independently. Check to see if they can swim the length of the pool and ask them to tread water for a minute. Lay down. Okay. 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 So, Mary, what if you have a child that's not uh, really into being in the pool? And that's fine. Just but let them be comfortable yeah. in how they are. Sometimes it's just sitting on the wall, putting their feet in. Having the uh, Coast Guard approved life jacket on will ensure that if they do get into the water, they're going to be safe. Pool toys are fun, but they can also be dangerous because they block your view of who's in the water. It doesn't look like there are any kids in the water right now, but there are. So, make sure you take the pool toys out when you're not using them. It's also important to have a sturdy gate with openings that don't allow little ones to slip through and you wanna make sure the gate is self-locking. And don't forget kiddie pools and above ground pools. Experts say children can drown in as little as an inch and a half of water. So empty those smaller pools after using them and remove the ladder from larger pools. And no matter what kind of water the kids are in, always designate a water watcher, an adult assigned to watch the kids at all times tips to keep your family safe while swimming this summer. Now, even if your child is a good swimmer, fatigue can kick in. So set a timer to remind everyone to take a break and importantly, hydrate. With more on summer safety, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Beth. So Dr. Azar, let's talk about heat exhaustion. Yes. Let's get an idea of like, what are some of the warning signs we should be watching out for? So the number one thing, Vicki, is that people can either pass out or they have a core body temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Most of us don't have a digital thermometer on board, so others signs and symptoms to look for would be uh, confusion, headache, lightheadedness, dry skin. People think a lot, well, if you're overheated, you're going to be sweating a lot. Mm. No, people who have heat exhaustion will actually have very red, very hot, very dry skin. A That's a very good clue. For. Okay, so if you see someone who is experiencing that, what should you do? So the first thing to do is move them into a cool area. So a shady area under a tree, air conditioning, if you can. We have some props with us here. Yeah. If you have the, um, uh, if you're near ice packs, let's say you're at a picnic yeah. or something okay. like that, the places to put them under the neck, under the arm, in the groin, those are areas where a lot of blood vessels, that can okay. start to cool the temperature down. A big misconception is that you put people in an ice bath. Uh -huh. We don't want you doing that unless it was someone who has exertional exhaustion, meaning like a, a, an athlete who did a vigorous workout. Mm -hmm. They can go in an ice tub. Nobody else should go into an ice tub. And call 911. You should actually do that before you start initiating first aid because it is a medical emergency. Okay, that's good to know. So let's talk about prevention. How do you prevent yourself from becoming overheated? Well, it's really about dehydration. Mm -hmm. So obviously, sun exposure is the big one. And I think people often think, well, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and a lot of fluids, and that certainly can be beneficial. But you can also eat foods that have a lot or a high water content. Yeah. We're talking 
and strawberries, uh -huh. peaches, lettuce in salads, watermelon, yeah. celery, cucumbers. What to avoid? Alcohol is a big one. Alcohol definitely dehydrates. And we have here our good old Yeah, what about show. coffee? So we did think for a long time that caffeine acted as what's called a diuretic, uh -huh. meaning that it made you pee a lot yes. and that you would lose fluid that way. You really can't dehydrate yourself with caffeinated beverages really? on their own. Right. So if you're drinking an iced coffee, there's a lot of water in there too. So that's you okay. Enjoy your caffeinated beverages, but just keep an, keep an eye on how much you're sweating and how much you're taking it. And make sure you drink more water for alcohol. That's like an important rule, right? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Alcohol in the sun is just a big no-no. I know, and but that it mixes a lot during the summer, so people it gotta pay really attention. Does. Let's talk careful. about this, the debate over spray sunscreen versus cream sunscreen. Yes. Is there a difference and is one better than the other? Right, so if you ask, most dermatologists will say the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that you actually apply. Mm. And you know this, mm -hmm. Vic, my kids are a little older now, yeah. but trying to have your fidgety kids stay still to apply lotion is not that easy. Right. So for a lot of us moms and dads out there, it is easier to spray. Okay. Spray is fine as long as the spray is actually getting onto the skin. So be aware of, of wind and that kind of thing. Yeah. I like to apply the spray and then make sure that you rub it in, but it's just as good SPF 30 or above. Okay. Reapply every two hours. Reapply, especially if you're doing vigorous exercise and, and sweating. sweating or mm -hmm. swimming. Every time you come out of the pool, you have to reapply and let it sink in for about 15 or 20 minutes before and you go back in the sun. If you're spraying, make sure you do it outside in a well-ventilated spot. In a well-ventilated in a well -ventilated spot, yes. Okay, and I want to mention, obviously, you talked about you have we have hats, and of course, that sun protective clothing is important, too. Very, and we want to do, generally speaking, like colored light, okay. weight, hats, that kind of thing. If you can look through the piece of clothing, that's not thick enough, oh, right? You want to be able, it's, it's okay. more like you want it to be more opaque, mm -hmm. light colored and light, but still that you can't see the light through it. Then you know you're pretty well covered. Dr. Natalie Azar, you are the best. Thank you Thank for covering you so sun much safety for with us. us. Good to see you. All right, well, still to come from grilling to fireworks, hacks to keep your family safe all season long, and later, save or splurge how to stretch your dollars on summer necessities. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Whoa. You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. You all love Al Roker. <laughs> holidays, 4th of July, but before you do anything, some must-see safety tips and hacks to make sure everyone has a great time while staying safe. It's the 4th of July, and that means summer. Time to head outside and enjoy the weather. And if you're like me, there will be a lot of grilling happening in your house, but are you using one of these to clean your grates? Well, the metal bristles work great for cleaning, but they can also come out of the brush and get stuck in your food. So here is a fantastic alternative, an onion. Yeah, an onion. Check it out. It works really well to get all that gunk off of the grates. And if you don't have an onion, another quick, easy trick, aluminum foil. Just take a ball and get to scrubbing. 
Also, as you're getting ready to grill that meat, make sure you keep it refrigerated. The USDA says anything that's uncooked left out for more than an hour in this summer weather could make you sick. Serving adult beverages at the party? I like to use two different color cups, red ones for the grown-ups and the alcoholic beverages, blue ones for the kid-friendly drinks. There you go, ask me. That way, there is no confusion. And it just wouldn't be the 4th of July without fireworks. If you're heading out to a big show, it's gonna be amazing. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna be loud. And if you are bringing your little ones, don't forget the ear protection. I like these ones, they go over the ears just like this. Jay's helping us out. Those feel okay, Jay? Awesome. And if you can't find those in time, well, these work just as well, the traditional earplugs. Now let's talk about the at-home fireworks. So much fun, but they can also be incredibly dangerous. So before you light off those one, two, three goes or the rainbow shower, wow, this brings me back. Make sure you've done your homework. Fire extinguisher at the ready, have it out, know how to use it. And don't forget, sparklers, very fun, but even something as small as this can start a big fire. So have the bucket of water ready and when everything's done, Extinguish it and you're safe. And of course, check to see if it's legal to light fireworks where you live. Here's a great tip for when you venture out into the crowds for fireworks. Use a temporary tattoo with your name and phone number so if your child gets lost, someone can call you right away. And you can get this temporary tattoo paper online, print it out at home, that's what I did. You don't have time for that. Permanent marker works just as well. Pool parties are always fun, but here's some tips. Be sure to designate a responsible and sober adult, I'll take that, thank you, to watch the pool. As an additional safety measure, there's a number of high-tech tools that can help you in case of a potential pool safety incident. There's this bracelet by Safety Turtle, and it will sound an alarm the second your kid hits the water. And this is super loud. There's no way you're gonna miss this alarm. And it works for your pets too if your dog is not a strong swimmer, right, Peanut? And you've definitely heard this before, but don't forget about the sunscreen. Reapply that sunscreen about every hour. We all have our phones with us all the time. Just set a timer, easy reminder. And a great rule of thumb for exactly how much sunscreen to use, the experts recommend a shot glass full. But really, you can never get too much. And just a reminder, every year animal shelters see an influx of pets who get spooked by the fireworks and run off. So make sure those tags on your pets are updated with your correct phone number and address. And also just keep your pets inside during the fireworks. All right, when we come back, your summer shopping guide, where to find the deals and later how to host the hottest summer get togethers. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all.
We are back with our Consumer Confidential telling you what to buy in the month of June and what you may want to skip to save some money. So here to break it down is our senior investigative and consumer correspondent, Vicki Wynn. Vicki, good morning. Good morning, guys. So they say June is a good time to buy for dads, yes. graduates. Is that true? I First of all, yes, and also, Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Father's Day. See, see that, that reaction? Oh, right. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, it's <laughs> Father's Produce Day. Produce the segment. Greeny didn't oh, put that on there. Um, <laughs> what else is modestly priced right now? Okay, we'll talk about dads and grads. Let's start with grads. Craig, you wanted to ask, is cash okay? Cash is always okay. Yes. I think we got to transition you and wean you off of gift cards. And the reason why, mm. there's $21 billion in unused gift cards right now sitting mm. in American households. $21 cash, billion? Cash always gets spent. $21 billion. I the average that. person sitting on $175 in gift cards. Mm -hmm. So if you want to give cash to grads, they're always going to be able to use it. If you have a grad that's really into DIY, summer is the time when everybody's getting out there doing those projects themselves, dads as well. So tools and gadgets tend to go on sale. Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Sears, those are all great places to find all of those little things that you need or a tool set, a tool box this time of year is great. The other thing that goes on sale in June is athletic apparel because mm. January is the big push, new year, new you. June, the weather is great again, yeah. so look for uh, Adidas, Nike, okay. Puma, the typical places, but also lots of deals, buy one, uh, buy more, save more type deals at places like JCPenney and Kohl's on shorts, tank tops, all the things you need for that summer refresh. I hear some people are training for a marathon, so this is a good time for you, Chanel. Oh, there you go, yes. get some new sneakers. And then think about it, you're outside, so first aid supplies, go and check that kit in your car, in your medicine oh, cabinet, make sure everything is, is fresh, up to date, the band-aids are still sticky. Amazon last year had 50% off of band-aids and Neosporin and all that good stuff, so you want the, those things on hand for all right, sunburns so, and bites. So what are some of the big sales, big ticket items going on? Okay, this month? so Bath and Body Works, they, they call it the queen of June sales because that's when you get all your lotions, your potions, your soaps out. This is the time to stock up. Body Shop also huh. does a sale up to 75% off oh, Bath wow. & Body Works. And the hack from the crazy coupon lady is if you sign up for the email, you'll get those coupons mailed to you. That's typically a sale that's better to do in store because those items are heavy. So if you have to pay for shipping or a minimum purchase, you'll get better deals in store. Okay. All right, uh, video games is the next one. 90% right. off of PC games. Oh. Steam and GOG look for deals starting mid-June and late June that go into July. Humble Bundle and Ubisoft. I think they're trying to get people from outside to come back inside, so oh. this is the time. Up to 90% off of those, oh. those computer games. And then pet supplies for Pepper and oh. my dog Moose. Chewy has their What's your dog's name? His Moose. His name is Moose. He's, he's little, but you know, big but and But mighty. Yeah, <laughs> tiny but mighty. Um, pet supplies. Chewy has their huge sale in June, up to 50% off. Not just for dogs and cats, fish, reptiles, that guinea okay. pig you've always wanted. Oh, right? yes. And the farm animals as well. All right, finally, are there some items that maybe aren't uh, a good time to buy? I guess they're most affordable at this moment. Yes, you want to hold off. If you haven't gotten your air conditioner for the summer, this is not a great time to get it. They're going to go on sale again July, August, September. Brand name clothing, if you're into it, Nordstrom has its big anniversary sale. Okay. The previews start June 29th, it's, uh, but you want to wait until July 15th because that's when the sale actually kicks in. Mm. For anything that's high-end, brand name, that's when you're going to see the big sales. And then on your bigger ticket Amazon devices. Like Alexa? Like Alexa, Echoes, those kinds Got of it. things. Prime Day is coming, Christmas oh, in July. Right. Trey Bodge, our smart shopping expert, predicts it'll be the second week of July, so don't buy that right now. But if you want to get your dad a tablet or some kind of device, mm -hmm. this could be a good time for Father's All Day. Right. Thank you. Thanks so much. We love our dads. This morning on today's checklist, we are focusing on summer medical travel safety as we enter prime vacation season with all the time and, and energy that we spend planning the actual trip. It's a good idea to prepare for injuries and illnesses as well. So we brought in an expert, Dr. Kavita Agarwal is a board certified in internal medicine. Dr. Kavita, good to have you good back. Good morning. Doctor. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh -huh. So before we hop on that plane or hop yeah. on that train or hop in the car, you yeah. say that it's a good idea to talk to a, a doctor and our pharmacist. Why? Absolutely, because think about this, you want to have a summer vacation without getting sick, right? We want to have a fun time. So what I would recommend is checking with your doctor first. Okay. And what they can do is just make sure that you're up to date with your routine vaccines, like the flu and the tetanus shot. And then also your childhood vaccines. You want to make sure that you're up to date with your chicken pox and your polio, mumps, measles, rubella, because there are some areas around the world that have pockets of those infections, and that way you'll be safe and protected. I'm looking, go ahead. I was going to say, and also with your pharmacist, you 
can ask for certain kinds of prescriptions? Um, yeah, they can give you some recommendations, you know, for over-the-counter meds, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think when you speak with your doctor first, they will review which country you're traveling to, okay. and they will review the CDC's recommendations just to make sure that if there are any infections that are brewing in that pocket of the world, that you are safe. So, like, if you're going to the tropical areas, you may want to take bug spray to prevent mosquito-borne infections mm -hmm. like chikungunya, Zika, dengue, malaria, or even Ooh. antibiotics. All of those mm -hmm. things. Yes. I'm looking at this next um, uh, this next list here about what kind of documents you need. And I have to be honest, before you travel, things I haven't really thought about, like bringing some of your health documents. Yeah, you so if you have any important health documents, make a copy. It's so easy these days. You have a phone, you can take a picture of it, bring it with you. Um, things such as your COVID vaccine cards or some countries that may still require that. Um, and if you take any regularly prescribed medicines, your doctor can actually prepare a health summary that includes your medical diagnoses, your surgery, right, your medication, Right, in the allergies. language where you go. Yes, yes, not just in English, but in the language of the country that you're traveling That's to. so right. interesting. Yes, and your doctor can review your meds just to make sure that they're approved in the country you're traveling I will tell to. you, if you've ever had to go to the hospital or go to a doctor in an emergency in another yeah. country, I had to do that once. It's scary. It is You don't scary. really have, you think you can just pull out your insurance card. It no, just doesn't work that way. No. So on that note, you say yes. to consider yes. traveler's health insurance. Absolutely, because the insurance that you buy here doesn't really typically cover care abroad. Yeah. And if you buy it, then at least you'll have affordable health care while traveling. And I've also understood that sometimes you might want to, depending on where you're going, you might want to think about evacuation insurance as well because and usually that's covered with your travel insurance mm -hmm. good yeah, good deal absolutely. masks have been some people are wearing them mm -hmm. I've been traveling a lot some people aren't what is your rule with that and some other general rules I think now it becomes a personal decision talk with your doctor about it I think if you have chronic conditions that put you at risk for respiratory illnesses and complications you may want to still wear the mask when you're indoors and in close quarters but people say when you walk on the plane and when you walk off is when you should wear it but when actually you're sitting on the plane because of the filter it's oh actually the filters are really good the air circulation is good, it really reduces the risk of infection. Okay. Absolutely. What are some other general rules? Um, so if you're going on a long journey, um, something that is like a very long car, plane, train ride, sitting for prolonged periods can cause your blood to pool in your legs and you could be at higher risk of blood clots. So the way to prevent that is get up like every two hours or so mm -hmm. and stretch out those calf muscles, go for a walk. Um, also want to stay hydrated because it's summertime, right? Yeah. You could be out in the sun, you're on the beach, going for a hike, stay hydrated. Um, skip risky foods. Mm, um, yeah. If you're going to be in an area where you don't know about the water, if it's safe, yeah. mm. I say you stick to bottled water, mm -hmm. skip the ice. We've all been yeah. there. Oh my yeah. gosh, you oh don't yeah. want to be sick while on vacation. <laughs> it's good. Um, wash those hands too. Wash those yeah. hands, yeah. get right. the street foods. Long absolutely. flights I wear up. Compression side. Oh, they help. They yeah. help. Definitely. That's, that's yeah, helped absolutely. Because well, then I've had blood clots. Yeah. So, yeah. what about what are some of the uh, the over-the-counter medicines we should be bringing with us? And I definitely recommend taking them from here. Because once I was in Paris, my son got sick. We went in, and everything's in French, and you don't, yeah. don't even know what's yeah. what. So you want to have meds that you know and are comfortable with. So the things that I pack and like to take with me are motion sickness meds, your anti-diarrheals, your cold and flu meds, um, pain relievers, things. cold um, sleep aids. You know, because mm -hmm. especially in a it's very hard yeah. to sleep. Sure. And if you got a, a red eye, you want to be refreshed the next day. Um, and also going back to the bug spray, you want to choose something that is EPA registered and that way you know it works. And sunscreen, don't forget yeah. the sunscreen. Yeah. 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 This makes your trip a little always. smoother, and, you know, yeah. when you have these things. Yes. Good yes. advice. And also with the over-the-counter meds, the nice thing is that if you're trying to take your carry-on mm -hmm. and not, you know, bring a checked-in luggage, they come in these foil packs that are slim yes. and then you can avoid the liquids and just oh. stick to the tablets so Thank you don't you. get stuck at security. Well, coming up, hacks to make the most out of summer from staying cool to being the hostess with the mostest. Consumer Confidential is coming right back.
right now that we know how to stay safe and what to buy and when to buy it, let's take things to the next level and make the most of what summer has to offer with hacks for staying cool and how to host the hottest get together. Melanie Berlier, the Spruce Group General Manager, she's here now to help us maximize our summer. Okay, welcome Melanie. I'm gonna bring us over here. Start off with uh, talking to us about these products and how can they help us with our summer plans. There are so many underrated ways to beat the heat this summer. When it comes to energy efficiency, one of the simplest things you can do is swap out all of your old bulbs oh. for the newer ones because they're more energy efficient mm -hmm. and they're not going to emit any heat throughout your home. Nice, so you save money on the bill and they're cooler. What about these devices here? The so the dehumidifier comes in handy because your air conditioning unit is working really, really hard to cool the air and remove moisture from the air. But if you have a dehumidifier oh. on site, the air conditioner isn't going to have to work as hard. Nice, oh, I love that. Okay, and then finally talk to us about the pillow and sheets here. Sure, so bedding is super important when it comes to your temperature control, mm -hmm. which impacts your quality of sleep. Yes. With a cooling pillow, you're actually going to remove heat from your body and get a better night's rest oh, during I like the summer. like that. Yeah, it's so important to sleep yeah. with a cool pillow. And at the Spruce, we recommend really lightweight, 100% cotton sheets for the summer months. Okay, excellent. All right, my family loves to be outside. We can't wait to get out there, use our backyard. Tell us about different things that we can do to stay cool, stay hydrated, and have a good time. Sure, so a DIY bar cart is one of our favorite oh, things. Oh, that's a great idea. It's so easy to do, and it's a fan favorite. So you just need, in addition to the bar cart, you need a beverage dispenser mm -hmm. to display your batch cocktail of choice. Mm -hmm. You need super durable tumblers. Forget glass outdoors, please. Yeah. It's much safer to go with a durable plastic. And then you're gonna want an ice bucket. If you're feeling next level, throw some succulents on there and a bowl of lemons and limes. And staying hydrated is important, so getting a big size, getting everyone the liquids that they need. All right, Absolutely. let's talk a little bit about staying safe when you're in the sun. We talked about sunscreen earlier, and I think that's so vital. Yeah, one of our favorite things is that we recommend a sun protection station. Mm. You're gonna want to include sun hats, sunglasses, and sunscreen that your family members or visitors can choose from. Okay, and then finally, the sun goes down. You still want the party to continue. That's kind of the most fun, because then it's cooler. Yes. What are some things to help us get through the summer nights? So we love lighting, wicker lanterns, string lights are beautiful, but when it comes to insects, uh -huh. an insect yes. repelling candle is gonna do double duty as both a source of warm, cozy vibes and a bug repellent. Okay, and you know what we did? We bought one of those giant outdoor fans, which really helps to keep the bugs away as well. Yes, those are a great idea too. I love this wicker lamp. All right, Melanie, what about outdoor movies? That's becoming more and more popular. Backyard movie theaters are so easy to create and they're fun for literally everyone of all ages. All you need are a screen, mm -hmm. a projector, an audio system, a content source, and a few cables and wires. <laughs> You're like, all you need are these seven things. <laughs> but they're, they're pretty affordable these days, yes? They really are, and aside from the technical, aspects all you want to think about are food seating and maybe some mosquito netting but definitely everyone has fun in a backyard movie theater moment melanie burley i thank you so much so appreciate you thank you for having me all right well that is our time for all of us here at nbc news i'm vicky win be sure to join me for another edition of consumer confidential right here on today all nice. and cool The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host an outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Booze, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules 
And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people want to get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really want to knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice Nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. 
My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. While our ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grapes once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. 
We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini, and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve, and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it. We can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings up more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water. I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt. And then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle. I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. 
Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard ball. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is when we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. and then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kind of mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with, that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, 
That's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries buy in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of this same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle during the summer? So I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill. It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. My first two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate, and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago, and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> my last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. So good to see you. Anyone ready to eat? Oh, yeah. 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 Let's make our way to the table. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main Woo! event. My simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you guys think of the potato salad? Yeah. Well, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. And my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this. Nope, needs more of this. Before it went into the book, 
they were still nervous about it. I was right. like, it's we going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But Regardless. it's gonna hit. Everyone has loved it. Right. Like, you did your thing, Josh. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that, <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink Woo. lemonade. Delicious. Cheers. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet because we are going to get on the dance floor. <laughs> Let's bust the move. All right. Okay. Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website. Welcome to The Boost. Today we're going to take a look at the power of sisterhood with organizations doing the important work of bringing connection and confidence to women and girls all across the country. We're going to start though with a Detroit couple getting their hands dirty to breathe new life into their community. Jacob Sobroff has their story. On any given day you can hear the buzz of woodwork. So this is the wood shop where all the magic happens art created from salvaged material found in wrecked Detroit buildings at this 24,000 square foot warehouse, once an old car dealership. So in here is the place to paint all the cars. 
now a showroom and woodshop owned by Bo Shepard and her partner in life and business, Kyle Dubay. These are our Ella tables. It's made out of salvage barn flooring um, from like local Metro Detroit barns that have fallen. Well, this is like the first coat. The like, two are excited about their next big project nearby, which they call the Chateau Beaufay. Beaufay from the name of the street it sits on. This is the future home sweet home, huh? That's it. Yeah, yeah. this is the dream home. <laughs> Chateau for what they see beyond the boarded up windows and falling bricks. Structurally, a little compromise, um, but if you look past that, it's beautiful. Bo Shepard and Kyle Dubay are the owners of Woodward Throwbacks, a passion turned business built on salvaged materials from the streets of Detroit. The two met each other 10 years ago at an abandoned park cleanup, both on bikes. Where did the passion for restoration come from? That kind of is something that happened organically for myself and I think Bo as well. Me and Kyle loved biking and exploring the city. And back then we noticed that there was just so much discarded material, construction debris, um, just vintage antiques. And so we were like, hey, like we should build something for ourselves using materials. When they started, the Motor City was going through hard times. After declaring bankruptcy in 2013, over 80,000 homes were abandoned. What other people might call trash, you look at it and think what? Possibilities. Possibilities. <laughs> yeah, or it's like, yeah, something that we can completely transform. Kyle's an artist who took woodshop in school. Bo, a designer, who went to school in Detroit for car interior design and worked with her father, a building contractor. They started out selling pieces they made at fairs. Then the big box stores came knocking at their door. When did this go from a passion to a business? Um, probably like within like the year of starting. What we were doing a lot then is little home decor, like wall signs and bottle openers. And we started going to the local farmer's market and we did really well and kept just kind of like, hey, like there might be something here. There's plenty of resources mm -hmm. for materials. There was a lot of texture and honest wear in what we were making. Um, and we've always told the Detroit story. They showed me some of their reclaimed finds. Even this is reclaimed? Yeah. So this is salvage chalkboard that we got out of a DPS high school. This came from a Detroit public school. Yeah. Yes. So this literally would have been in a, in a landfill Dumps. had you guys not grabbed it. Yeah. Yeah. With bigger goals in mind, they bought this Detroit house for $6,500. Yep, $6,500. It was an eyesore in the neighborhood, and yeah. we're just like, well, we never fully deconstructed an entire house, like saving all the materials. After rehabbing it themselves, they sold it for $410,000. It really is a transformation, huh? Yeah, it's kind of hard to remember what it looked like when we bought it. Yes, the when transformation is... It's pretty great. But in a city where gentrification and flipping can be dirty words. What you do is anything but flipping. And we're doing like the complete opposite. It <laughs> took us like three years and we spent like three times our budget on it. It's like, we're buying this house, so one save it, restore it. And we also wanted to show people like, this is how you can renovate a house in the city and still give it so much character, so much soul. This next story gives us a glimpse into the possible future of construction, a whole new kind of home printer that could change the way we build our communities. Take a look. You are witnessing what may be the most significant change in home construction. That is a giant 3D printer, and it's spitting out the walls of a brand new house. Just two men, one with a tablet building, or shall we say, printing a house versus traditional building methods, which would typically require a dozen set of hands. This is the way of the future. This will become mainstream. This will become widespread. And duck, duck, seriously. <laughs> there you go, no duck. The printer's nozzle layers the walls with a concrete type mixture, computer guided construction, which is more precise than a pastry chef's skilled hands decorating a cupcake. It feels a little bit like Play-Doh. How quickly does it harden here? Quickly enough to stack on top of it, right? It's got to stay flowable enough to get to the printer, but then it's got to harden up enough for us to stack on top of it. And that's the secret sauce. Perhaps most significantly, what would typically take a construction crew 10 months to build is now accomplished without wood or nails in about half the time. This may sound like a novel experiment, but it is so much more than that. Here in the Texas Hill Country, in this thousand acre subdivision, they're building a hundred homes like this, a place that someday may be known 
as the spot that home construction changed forever. To best understand the sea change happening here in Georgetown, Texas, consider Lennar, one of the largest home builders in the United States, has teamed with the inventors of this giant printer, an Austin-based tech company called Icon. I believe we are on the brink here of doing something very special, something very innovative, and no one's ever done it, no one's ever built 100 homes uh, with 3D printers. It's also unusual that 3D printing a house? Well, I know it sounds unusual, but this technology is actually one that's existed for a while. Dimitri Julius is one of the brains behind this tech that allows for walls that are curved, even wavy if you want, and at the same time are so incredibly solid. So that means something like this can withstand potentially uh, hurricanes is, a, is an interesting use case. We're currently building houses on the Texas Gulf Coast, thinking specifically about uh, the durability of a concrete material. If all of this sounds like it's out of this world, like something from the Jetsons, then you're on to something because... Three, two, one. NASA, which just launched Artemis to orbit the moon this week, is working with ICON. We, we are planning on putting a 3D printer on the moon with NASA. And beyond? That's the hope. Mars? That's the dream, Mars. Someday, printed homes up there. But first, here on Earth, the test homes have shown they're more energy efficient and usually quiet. The walls, they feel a little bit like corduroy. A printed house, what maybe one day future generations will find commonplace. My son's uh, 15 months old. Will this be routine when he's 15 years old? If it is, we've succeeded. back with the Boost and the Outstanding Mature Girls Organization, also known as OMG. This group is instilling confidence in young women and girls through mentorship and community service. Check it out. This is Sashika Bonchamp. Born in Trinidad, she's now a Baton Rouge, Louisiana inspiration. Miss Sashika is amazing. She's so hardworking. She's always running. She's doing something. Miss Sashika is like another mother to me. Yes, in these neck of the woods, she's kind of a big deal. She has really like shown me how to have confidence in myself. She extends beyond extension. Anything for the kids, and I just love her. The former radio show host, known for her affectionate smile and loving personality, is the founder and president of the youth mentoring organization, OMG which stands for Outstanding Mature Girls. Whether you are a scholar or whether you're struggling in school, like OMG is the place for you because we teach those girls who are scholars to be able to help pull their sister up. 10 years ago, Sashika created the nonprofit which serves girls ages 9 to 19, offering leadership training, mentoring, and community service. 
OMG has given me a continuous sisterhood, but it also has helped me to break out of my shyness. It really helps me feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. They all are there for each other, and they just all want to just do right and, and be leaders. Shakita Maiden credits OMG for helping her daughter, Anaya. She wasn't smiling, and I was wondering why. So I used to get in trouble a lot, get suspended and stuff like that. When I came to OMG, it was like a sister. It helped her to get in a safe space where she was able to talk and vent and cry and be consulted and not be judged. And it helped her to develop a self-confidence. How has OMG changed your relationship with Anaya? We are closer and It's okay, it's okay. I just thank God that it saved her. Sashika often reflects on her own childhood struggles, using her story to uplift others. I felt like I had to put a mask on. When I went to school, I had to be somebody else. What made you feel like you had to be somebody else at school? Being bullied and picked on for how I spoke, my hair. So I went home and I wanted to cut all my hair off because it was something that drew attention at school. For the wife and mother of three, launching OMG was a lifelong passion. Today, OMG has eight chapters across the state of Louisiana with about 200 members. Everything was funded out of my pocket, or should I say my husband's pocket, <laughs> and just small donations. And that's how we have survived. People think that we get so much money and we don't. We just, it's just the, the community coming together and just helping and to make it great and to make sure that these girls have the best experience ever in what we do. What do you think your teenage self would think of you now? I knew you can do it, Sash. Like, good job. And continue just like leading and lighting the path for others. And that's what I want to do, just light that path. And now it was our turn to brighten up everyone's day. And Miss Sashika, where are you? I interrupted a round of games for a special surprise for Sashika. Today, it's time that we recognize you and all you do for the community. First, the mayor of Baton Rouge, Sharon Weston Broom, gave a proclamation. I just want to commend you and celebrate you for all the work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Then, four of OMG's smallest members helped us deliver one big surprise. Wells Fargo was so impressed to learn all the work Outstanding Mature Girls is doing to set up young women for success. They will be donating $10,000 so OMG can continue I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful because I don't get this quite often, so I'm very grateful for it. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Now we are stepping into a very special dance studio to find out about a sisterhood built on movement and empowerment. NBC's Blaine Alexander has this next story. Five, six, ready, move. It hits you as soon as you step through the doors. The swag, the precision. We keep the day lit! No, y'all don't. No, you don't. Because if you did, it wouldn't sound like that. And it doesn't come by accident. I'm going to do some sit-ups. I'm going to do some push-ups. I might do some waltzes. This is boot camp. <laughs> it's, what this is. it's a stepper's boot camp. Yes. Welcome to DSSD Dance Studio, the soulful brainchild of Coach Latata Wallace. Tell me about this place, because as soon as I walked in, I felt the energy. I just feel like... The energy has to be perfect, not just for me, but for the kids as well. So this really is a sacred space for them. It really is. And for you. And for, and, and for me, yes. In fact, it's built right into the name, DSSD, Daughter, Sister, Stepper, Dancer, named for the bond that Latata herself longed for as a child. I took everything that I didn't have when I was a kid, I created it here at DSSD. Growing up in Decatur, Georgia, Latata was in and out of school and in and out of trouble. My mother was young. My father wasn't active. I remember more bad than I do good. But in seventh grade, she found her safe space in two very special coaches. Together, they introduced her to the world of stepping, and she was hooked. 
as I'm stumping and I'm hitting these moves, I'm feeling the positive energy go through my body. I'm leaving the, the trauma and the drama and everything I've been through, like it's leaving me. It was like therapy for you. Yes, it was definitely therapy. Soon, it became her mission to give that medicine to girls just like her. Latata started as a middle school teacher with a step team on the side. It wasn't until she was laid off in 2016 that she pursued the business full time and DSSD was born. Today, the studio has more than 100 steppers, nearly half a million social media followers, and enough trophies to fill a dance floor. But her steppers say the real reward is what happens here. What is it that kept you guys coming back? Each the, other? Yeah, yeah the, the team, bond, the sisterhood. OJ, Alana, and Jamaria have been at the studio from the very beginning. What do you think is the biggest thing that you've gotten from DSSD? It helped me come out my shell. And now I perform in front of a bunch of people and I never would have thought I would have done that. There's little girls that act like me, that think like me, that look like me, and I could be that person to them. Oh, confidence. Because Laura knows I would never be sticking my tongue out every two seconds if it wasn't for this. <laughs> and for Latata, that's what this space is all about. I have stopped a cool kid from committing suicide. Mm -hmm. I stopped kids from running away because I just let them know, hey, it's not cool. I've been there. I've done that. It doesn't mean she's not tough. Latata's standards are sky high. Ready, hit, move. Even with the least experienced steppers. One, two, three, yes, what? Latata says she can make a stepper out of anybody. So I thought I'd put that to the test. That's it, you got it. <laughs> Up next, another group of women taking some big steps forward in the name of sisterhood. How they are part of a special movement spreading to cities all over the country. And trust me, when they go on a walk, you can't miss them. If you would have told me 250 people would come to a walk in New York City, I would have never believed you. <laughs> Every walk is a good walk for Brianna Cohn. It's one thing to go for a walk or go for a walk with friends, but you turned this into something huge. I was feeling a little lonely, a little isolated, and I was like, what if I post it on my TikTok? What if we did a walk club where we just like drink our coffee, we chit chat, we leave our worries behind? The 28-year-old fitness trainer, who had already amassed millions of followers across TikTok and Instagram, asked her community if they would join her for a walk around New York City's Pier 45. People were like, oh my god, I want to join. This sounds amazing. Like, people were sending it to their friends, and I was not expecting that. I was expecting like 10, 20 people. On her first group walk back in March of this year, more than 100 women showed up for a stroll, and City Girls Who Walk was born. How would you describe the perfect walk? You listen to that feel good music and you just get lost, lost outside, lost in the time and just a quick like 30, 30 minute walk. That's all you need. Brianna didn't want the walking group to be a huge commitment. The plan was once a week for a 40 minute walk. That's it. Some girls like go to brunch after, some just hang out and chat. What is it about walking with others? When you're walking by yourself, I feel like so many thoughts come into your head, but if you walk with someone else, you can kind of forget all of that and just talk about life and just like feel that connection. The event blew up on social media with hundreds of women showing up week after week, forming a sisterhood in the process. So who goes on these walks? Who's walking together? It ranges, not kidding, from like 18 to 65, 70. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soon, women in other cities like Philadelphia, Boise, and Phoenix were creating their own branches of City Girls Who Walk. What's some of the most meaningful feedback you've received from this? I actually pulled up one of my favorite quotes that somebody said to me. They said, City Girls Who Walk has changed my life. It is so, so much richer and more full of love with dear new friends in a season when I really, really needed them. I can't thank you enough. How so does that make you feel? It's, it honestly, like, it could bring me to tears. Like, it's helped so many girls, and that's exactly why I started it.
Welcome back to The Boost. Most people are adults by the time they earn a degree, but this next young man is about to do it at the age of 12. And he's not getting just one degree, but five. Macy Jenkins with our Los Angeles station NBC4 has this story. For these Civil Air Patrol cadets in Chino, it's all about learning the basics. They get leadership out of this. With a shared dream of becoming a pilot. Yes, sir, man. And for 12-year-old Clovis Hung, I expected to get my license at 16. It's next on his to-do list after he becomes the youngest person to graduate from Fullerton College on Saturday. I'm going to graduate with five degrees, associate degree in history, associate degree in science, uh, social science, uh, science and mathematics, arts and human expressions, uh, social behavior and self-development. In 2019, Clovis left his second grade classroom bored and ready for a bigger challenge. I wanted to be in college because I was really curious at a really young age. That curiosity led him to enroll in Fullerton College in 2020. They asked me questions like, how old are you and what are you doing here? So I'll just answer them. I'm 12 and I'm taking classes with you. And he's done it all with mom Song Choi by his side. He loves studying. Actually, studying is his hobby. Her incredible baby boy fighting against the odds since the very beginning. When he was born, he was very incredible because uh, he was a premature baby. And he was born at the 27th week, less than two pounds. Choi, now beaming with pride, yeah. says she hasn't forgotten. Clovis is still just a kid. I'm not a tiger mom, no. Yeah, actually, it's the opposite. Sometimes I just need to remind him to relax, take it easy. Outside of the classroom, he's a Boy Scout and loves basketball, archery, and traveling, visiting 23 countries so far with his family. I study a lot so that I could get a lot of things done before I play. As part of Squadron 20, the studying continues. Follows directions well. He's learning. He's trying to grow. And Clovis says the number one thing it takes to succeed is a healthy dose of self-motivation. What I do is that I tell myself that I can do it. You can keep going. You did a very good job. We've got a few more academic superstars on our hands. Triplets who've dubbed themselves overachievers, overcoming the odds to make graduation day together. Colleen Williams, also with our Los Angeles station NBC4, has this inspiring story. I'm Ireland. I'm Smith. I'm Kayla. They are the Shoot family, or Team Shoot, local triplets graduating from USC. But the journey to get them here required teamwork akin to the Trojan football team in their very best year. For the past 21 years, they've been almost inseparable graduating together from La Cunata High School, and except for a brief period during COVID, always in the same zip code. Seconds apart at birth, their personalities couldn't be more different. You know, I'm calm, obviously. I'm the talker. Smith's, he's president of the USC State Club. He's also doing pre-med, so he's kind of in that realm. Ireland, she's Oh, she does rock climbing, she's very outdoorsy. Their journey to get to this day, to graduation at USC, with them all in sync, has been nothing short of extraordinary. Ireland Smith and Kayla lost their mom to cancer when they were only 15. A single mom who they say worked 80 hours a week to provide, from her they learned hard work and perseverance. And did I mention, they're all graduating with honors. Uh, Smith and I will both be graduating uh, summa cum laude, and he'll be graduating magna cum laude, and I'll be graduating with communication honors. You get the drift. Ireland, Smith, and Kayla are smart, driven, and not afraid to take on the world. Getting to this point would not have happened without their Trojan family and their adoptive family, Chris and Joe Lee. Most amazing people. Our, on planet Earth. Exactly, our guardian angels. Yeah, I think they, in many ways, saved our lives and they changed the trajectory of our entire life forever. The couple and their two children became instant family, officially adopting the triplets in 2019. To this day, I'm not totally sure why they decided to take a bet on us and <laughs> bring, them, bring us into their home, but I'm so glad that they did. They're some of the kindest people I've ever met. They're hilarious. They're just fun to talk to. And this picture of their mom graduating from this very same spot at USC in 1997 has always been great motivation. We overachieved our way here and we're all going to walk together and I would like to think that she'd be proud of them.
We are back here on the boost with that one last feel good story for you. Check it out. A man named Scott had just uh, a Father's Day he'll never forget. So his dog passed away a few months back and he'd been wanting a new companion ever since. Well, on Sunday, he got his wish. It's his day, babe. I don't have a dog yet. Dang it! <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> we got you on, Scott. There he is. It's a big boy. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Is that right there? Oh, oh, that oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, that's love at first sight. Really perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Pop. Man's best friend. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, there it's it like is. The old koala hug. And that's oh, so cute. Right. You know what? Oh, and, 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 I like the quiet boost. Yeah, like, and the dog, sometimes you, you just got to take it in. Yes. It's beautiful. A little pup. That's oh, a special yeah. moment. Oh, you know? really, really, really sweet. Very nice. Sweet. Well done. They don't all have to be standing ovations. No. You know? It's oh, very heartfelt. Sweet. Love that. Well, thank you for joining me for another uplifting episode of The Boost. We hope to help you keep those spirits lifted up all day long. And we will see you right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. I'm Shop Today Editorial Director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in Editor's Picks. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Dovul, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share our must-have summer travel items in Influencer Trends. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. This is Shop All Day Summer Travel. Hey everyone, I'm Adriana Brock, and we are back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for summer travel. And whether you're driving across the country or on a short road trip, traveling to a tropical oasis, hitting the beach, you name it, we have all the products you need to make summer travel a total breeze. From a travel friendly and super chic visor to a pair of sunglasses that are trending on social media and under $20. And see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you. Okay, first up, travel essentials that are gonna make your life easier. Let's start with a flying must-have. Okay, so this is the perfect one for those chilly airplane rides. It's a two-in-one travel-sized pillow that unzips to reveal a cozy blanket that's 65 by 45 inches. It comes in six different colors and it's made with soft to the touch micro fleece fabric that is great for plane travel, road trips, or even camping. And you fold it back up and it doubles as a cozy pillow. Plus it has a convenient luggage sleeve and a backpack clip so you can take it on the go. All right, next, do not let a messy bag turn into a bottomless pit when you're digging around trying to find those essentials like your phone, a passport, or a wallet. That can be so stressful when you're on the go or in a rush to get out the door. This affordable purse organizer is gonna put an end to the endless digging. It has all the compartments, pockets, zippers, everything you need to keep everything in a designated spot so you'll never have to lose your keys or misplace your sunglasses ever again. The best part about this organizing insert too is that it's so lightweight, you can easily transfer it from your purse to your beach bag and you'll never leave home without those essentials. And speaking of the essentials, we all need a good wallet to keep those important valuables handy. This affordable wallet has everything you need to keep you organized while you're on the go. Eight card slots, an ID window, two compartments for cash and receipts, and a zip pocket. It also has a slot for your smartphone and it comes with a thin strap that can convert this wallet into a hands-free crossbody bag that you can take on the go. And when you're on the go, streamlining your beauty bag is a must and we thought you covered with a really smart solution. It's the Kitsch Ultimate Travel Essentials 11-piece set of containers that will let you bring travel-friendly sizes of all your favorite beauty products on the go without having to check in all those full-size bottles in a suitcase. These lightweight pouches are great for shampoo and conditioner. There's also a pump bottle that you can use, a spray bottle, and little jars for your skincare routine. Plus, it comes with a really convenient funnel and a spatula, so it's gonna make transferring all the products into the containers 
totally seamless. And once you have all your essentials in those handy travel containers, round out your beauty bag with this summer set of mini and full-size bestsellers from Sephora. The brand says that it comes with $134 worth of beauty favorites, including Supergoop's lightweight unseen sunscreen, Milk Beauty's Hydro Cooling Face Stick, Tarte's Surfer Curl Mascara, and my personal favorite, the Viral Tanning Drops. There's a total of 10 products, so you are really getting the most bang for your buck, and they are all perfectly sized for packing. Another travel essential we all need this summer is a pair of sunglasses, and we found the perfect pair for women and men. We actually discovered these popular sunglasses on social media, and they are going viral because they are so affordable. I mean, if you just look at this design, they're super sleek. They look so much more expensive than they actually are. And people who swear by these think they look good on everybody. Plus, they're so affordable. If you're like me and you lose your sunglasses all the time, you can buy two pairs, one for your bag and another for the car. These last two finds are things you didn't really know you needed, but once you use them and bring them along for your summer vacations, you will not be able to travel without them. First, we have the battery-powered Philips One by Sonicare Electric Toothbrush. This thing is genius. No more tiny travel toothbrushes or those flimsy manual toothbrushes that you get at the hotel. This electric toothbrush does all the work for you, and it comes in a really sleek case that's not gonna take up too much space in your toiletry bag. And it has a two minute timer with 30 second notification vibration so that according to the brand, you can get a deep clean every single time. And it's at a price we like under $20. Another hidden gem is this stainless steel water bottle with a secret compartment. The brand says this 18 ounce bottle can keep your beverage cold for up to 24 hours and hot for up to 12. But the coolest part is that the bottom unscrews to reveal a hidden compartment for valuables like your keys, your cash, and your cards. It also has a leak-proof lid, a carabiner, and according to the brand, has a sweat-free exterior. This is a must-have for all those pool and beach days. Let's run through the products one more time. The Ever Snug Travel Blanket and Pillow, the Travel Organizer Pouch, the Amazon Essentials Wristlet Wallet, the Kitsch Ultimate Travel Set, the Vacay All Day All Over Face Set, the Sojo's Polarized Sunglasses, the Philips One Sonicare Toothbrush, and the Stainless Steel Water Bottle. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap for Editor's Picks. Up next, content creator and founder of Hotel Lobby Candle, Lindsay Silverman, is here with us to share her travel must-haves. Stay tuned.
welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. If anyone knows travel, it's our guest today, Lindsay Silverman. She is a content creator and the founder of Hotel Lobby Candle, and she's here to share her travel must-haves with us. Lindsay, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm so excited that you're here. All right, so we're all about summer travel here, but I wanna start out with your journey, right? You started out as an intern at Vogue, and now you have several hats, several businesses, one of which is your candle line. But how did you capture the scent of the candle? So my career journey really started as an intern in the Vogue fashion closet and I worked my way up to becoming a luxury travel journalist and I got to travel around the world and stay at some absolutely incredible luxury hotels as part of my job. And throughout that experience, you know, there was something that I found that was always so compelling and really special about the way luxury hotels would pump these scents inside their lobbies. And so I always thought how amazing it would be to create a brand that would be able to bring that experience into everyone's home, whether you are traveling, not traveling, or have just gotten back from a trip. So that's why I launched Hotel Lobby Candle. Um, we launched the brand in 2020. Well, congratulations. I love that we get to experience that in the comfort of our own homes. We're gonna talk about your candle line in just a little bit. But Lindsay, I heard that you've been to 63 countries, that you've traveled to 63 countries. First of all, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. I, I'm pretty sure it's exactly 63. Exactly 63. Okay, so that's a lot to go through. Do you have a favorite travel memory from any of those 63 countries? I went to India for the first time uh, a couple years ago with a group of other creators and photographers, and I've been wanting to go to India forever. It was sensory overload. Yeah. You know, the food was incredible. The people were, were incredible from a, a visual perspective, being able to travel with other photographers and creators. It was truly one of the most incredible experiences. And, you know, like any travel experience, there were missed flights, there were <laughs> misconnections. It was all the kind of craziness and yeah. chaos that comes with traveling around the world, but it was incredible. Oh, I love that. I had Indian food last night. It is my favorite, so I'm adding that to my bucket list. Since you are the expert here, do you have any words of advice for people that are planning their big vacation this summer? Yeah, I would just say, you know, you can never be too prepared. Now there's so much uncertainty, and I think you really just have to be willing to kind of go with the flow a little bit more Things change, you know, some restaurants may have tougher restrictions, that hotel amenities may not be the same as what you're used to, but I think as long as you kind of go into your trip with a very open-minded attitude, I also think it's really important to remember that the hospitality industry has been hit so hard by the pandemic. A lot of places are understaffed and just be patient with people. Remember, like, a lot of these people are working the job of two people and, and, you know, tip well and be grateful for a really good service. And I think I just like have grace when you're traveling. Just remember that things are not the way they were four or five years ago. That is excellent advice. I love that. Let's dive into your picks. The first one here, let's take to the skies with this air mount. But how does it work? Okay, so I don't know about you, but I've noticed that all of a sudden the TVs on the back of the seats in planes have miraculously disappeared. And now we're being told by a lot of airlines to use our phones to stream our in-flight entertainment. And a lot of times that catches you by surprise and you're sitting there trying to set your phone up on your sweatshirt or your hat. And there are a couple of these in-flight air mounts that will just mount your phone, clips to the back of the seat in front of you or it clips to the tray table and it's just like having a mini TV, except that it's on your phone. You don't have to worry about propping it up or getting it just right. I mean, it's such a clever device. Moving on to our next clever device for summer travel. So let's talk about this. Why should we use a steamer over an iron? Actually, I was just away this past weekend and my husband loves to iron and he there was no iron in the hotel, so he called front desk and they didn't have one. And so it's one of the things where I just love traveling with a steamer. It's so convenient. It will get the wrinkles out of your clothes so quickly. This travel steamer is so small. I travel with it, but then I also just use it in my own home too. 
That's such a good idea. And I feel like when you're going on vacation, you still want your outfits to look on point and look beautiful. A steamer is the perfect way to do that. Speaking of looking on point and beautiful, uh, some of these hotels don't have the best light. I like this LED mirror. Tell me about it. Okay, so I have one right here. And what's amusing about it is that um, it's super compact. You can fold it up like this. It's literally the width of a, a small book or a magazine. And you can um, adjust the lighting. It even has three different settings. So you can have neutral light, warm light, or cool light. You can see right here what a difference it makes to the lighting on my face. Just doing wow. your makeup, good lighting. You can really do your makeup anywhere and you don't have to worry about what type of mirror lighting situation there is in your hotel. And I like, like exactly what you said, how sleek and compact it is because I do tend to overpack. So I like that this can fit in to my suitcase. Now, moving on to the next item that we have. I have to admit, I didn't necessarily think about this as a summer travel essential, summer travel item, the Apple AirTag. Why do we need it? If you put an Apple AirTag in your check bag, and, you know, God forbid if something happens, it gets lost, you're able to track where your bag is. Even if the airline doesn't seem to be able to help you locate it, you'll be able to find where it is um, by slipping an AirTag into the bag and then connecting it to your phone. That is such a clever idea. I love that. But I also love that you can also use it post summer travel, right? You can put it on your keys, on your wallet. So great for summer, but also great for everyday use. All right. And we cannot let you go without talking about the last item, essential for summer travel, this candle. Of course, your candle line. Can you tell me what the inspiration was behind the candle line? So Hotel Lobby Candle was inspired by the scents inside five-star hotels around the world. And each one of our candles really draws inspiration from a different place and a different kind of idea and moment. So the one you have right there is called Spa, and that was our most recent launch. It's probably one of the most um, highly anticipated launches we've had. I can tell by just looking at your face. I love it, I love it. When you smell it, it just automatically calms you. The scent is very fresh and it has water mint and eucalyptus Ooh. and jasmine and just super relaxing and refreshing. And then I think you also have with you our island candle, which I kind of consider a quintessential like summer candle. If you like coconut and vanilla and almond, this is gonna be your favorite candle. We have a lot of people who've tried all of ours and island is their you know number one favorite. That one, is that yes. your favorite? Yeah, I, I love, okay, first of all, I love all of them, but yes, tell me about yeah. linen. So linen was inspired by that crisp, fresh linen that you get when you walk into your hotel room for the first time. But what I wanted to do is make it sort of different. We didn't want it to make it smell like a dryer sheet or something so expected. So we added a little sandalwood and a little bit of a smoky, rich, deep notes to mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. that it just smelled really clean and fresh, but it had a little bit of depth. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that, that linen candle is really sexy. It's just for also a lot of people, it's their number one favorite. All right, Lindsay, I love all of these candles. It's hard for me to find a favorite, but do you have a favorite scent? Right now, the spa candle, I have had a very stressful week. And for me, the spa candle just helps bring me back to a very calm place. I, I was saying before I saw your face when you smelled it, it yeah. just, everyone has that reaction when they smell it, it just automatically calms you. It's like aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, put it next to your desk, put it next to your bed. We've designed the candles to smell even when they're not lit. So you're really getting that like hotel luxury spa experience all throughout the day whenever you're sitting next to it. I like the idea that I don't even have to light it. Lindsay, this smells amazing. I wish everybody could smell it. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for letting us know what we need for summer travel. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you and safe travels. Yes, yeah, same to you. Thank you, Lindsay. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The in-flight air mount, the handheld steamer, the folding LED mirror, the Apple air tag, and the hotel lobby candles. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Chassie Post is gonna share her go-to travel products in StyleFinder. Don't go away.
back. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we've been talking about summer travel essentials, and I've got the hottest items that are stylish and functional while on the go. And remember, see the QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Okay, so I feel like you guys are getting a peek into my closet this episode because this set is a piece that I own and love. And believe me, I'm not alone. This two-piece jogger set is a huge fan favorite and for good reason. This little set is super duper cute while being super duper comfortable. And you have probably heard me say it many times over, but I'm obsessed with sets. Why? Because it takes the guesswork out of getting dressed and a fabulous set looks like a jumpsuit. I mean, how chic and effortless. Or mix and match the two separates with the rest of your wardrobe for endless options. So we've got an easy, slightly oversized top and flattering jogger style pants that really come in handy when you're packing light because you can wear it in so many different ways. And I love all the different sleeve lengths. I mean, it comes in a tank, it comes in a short sleeve, long sleeve. So all of this is key when you're on the go in the summer. Now, forgive the extreme enthusiasm, but I am in love with this dress. What a fabulously stylish and versatile and unbelievably affordable dress. And I'm always looking for an easy to pack, easy to wear dress when I'm planning a trip. And this one checks all the boxes and more. So first up, check out the silhouette. It's an easy, loose fitting, midi length tank dress. I mean, sign me up. With its pullover style and one and done appeal, it's the perfect go-to. Also check out the hem, it's got a high-low hem. Secondly, color blocking, right? Color blocking is such a big trend these days and we've got two of my favorite colors here right on this dress. Pink and magenta, I mean pink on pink. Doesn't get any better than that. And how amazing are these other colors? I mean, look, it's a neutral with a pop of orange, so good. We've also got navy, with a pop of light blue at the bottom. And this dress can really go anywhere. Throw it in your suitcase, and when you get to your destination, you can wear it to the beach, you can wear it to the pool, you can wear it to brunch, you can wear it for a night out on the town. Now another thing on my list when it comes to summer travel is a great pair of white sneakers. And these sneakers are about as good as it gets. I was so excited by this find that I snapped them up for myself and I am thoroughly impressed. I mean, these chic sneaks get an A plus in both the comfort and style department and I just love them. And here's why. First of all, a classic white sneaker in general has become a must have wardrobe foundation piece and they go with everything in your closet from floral midi dresses and skirts to jeans to suits. But these sneakers have a few bells and whistles that make them an even better buy. The platform, I mean, look at this. I love a platform sneaker. You're seeing platforms everywhere this summer, but this is nothing crazy. It's about an inch and a half. I love the elongating effect of a platform. Plus it's easy to clean. And of course, the classic style. Who doesn't love a classic court shoe, lace-up design? And this has also got cute metallic details. And one of my absolute favorite things about these sneakers is they have a memory foam insert. So they're incredible cushy on my feet. I should know because I wore them to this set today. And lastly, I think they look so great. Plus, incredibly stylish. And they're under $20. And trust me, no one's ever gonna know it. Now, if you've been wondering what the hottest new hat trend is gonna be for the summer, Look no further because we've got it here, the visor. And shoppers are obsessed. Yes, the visor is trending big time thanks to the tennis core trend that we are seeing everywhere. But this season, visors aren't just for sports, though we love its sporty vibe. They're also for every day. You can wear them running around town, to the pool, to the beach, and of course on the tennis court and the golf course, right? And this stylish option is at the top of our wish list. 
And we love the fabulous straw material. Straw accessories are a really big trend this season, but it is also packable. That's right. You can roll this visor up and throw it in your carry-on or your suitcase or even in the back of your car. Now, in the summer, we show more skin. And if you don't already know about First Aid Beauty's Bump Eraser, then get ready to fall in love. This brand has some mega fans and for good reason. Now, the hype around the KP Bump Eraser borders on obsession. In fact, according to the brand, one tube of the bump eraser is sold every 45 seconds globally. It is a huge bestseller and has over 48,000 likes, or should I say loves, on Sephora.com. So let me break this little skin wonder down. So the KP Bump Eraser is essentially a body scrub that features both chemical and physical exfoliators for serious skin polishing power. According to the brand, the ingredients include glycolic and lactic acids at a combined level of 10%. So this is gonna help loosen the skin's top layer and decongest pores. And it also has pumice buffing beads that then help to whisk away dead skin. And shoppers also rave about how incredibly smooth their skin feels. And the cherry on top, this fabulous travel size. It's perfect for throwing in your bag and hitting the road. Last but not least, don't you just love a fashionable and functional travel gadget? I know I do. And this Lay & Go Cosmo Drawstring Makeup Organizer Bag is as cute as it is clever. And here's what makes it so cool. It's a patented cosmetic bag that lays flat and allows you to see all of your makeup at once. You can clean up in seconds. Just pull the drawstring cord and the Cosmo cinches up and closes for storage or travel. And it's got lots of really useful features. When it's open, the raised lip keeps makeup and brushes from rolling off the counter. And it also creates a clean and dry surface for you to do your makeup. It's also got zippered storage pockets and lots of brush holders. So you can fit a whole lot in this little bag. And we love that it's machine washable and wipeable. So key. Plus, it's great not just for vacation travel, but also for daily travel. You know, to the gym, office, you name it. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the two-piece jogger sweatshirt set, the PK knit dress with high-low hem, the white platform sneaker, the Belize It Packable Visor, the First Aid Beauty KP Bump Eraser, and the Lay & Go Cosmo Drawstring Makeup Organizer Bag. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on Style Finder and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. So tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. Hey, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadada is saying bye-bye to boring avocado toast with two of her favorite avocado-packed recipes. Then she'll banish sad desk lunches forever with a savory turmeric oatmeal and crispy cauliflower popper. Hey guys, it's Sama. I am so excited to share two of my favorite recipes with you today. They both use an avocado and they're both from my new cookbook. So let's get hashtag cooking. First up, we're gonna make my avocado cream pasta and then next for dessert, because we always have to have it, my avocado brownies. And yes, I did say brownies. This avocado cream pasta is literally one of my most popular recipes on my blog and I honestly think it's because you just need a blender to make this super luxurious sauce. I'm just gonna slice these tomatoes in half. You can totally leave them whole to roast them if you'd like. 
And I'm just gonna slice them so that we can get that nice caramelization around the edges. Now I'm just gonna arrange them onto my baking sheet. I've lined this with parchment paper. These rogue ones wanna be left behind, but they won't be. Now I'm just gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and season with some salt and pepper and red pepper flakes. Olive oil, some red pepper flakes, a little salt, and then some pepper. We don't wanna roast these tomatoes for too long, only about 10 to 15 minutes. If you do roast them for too long, it will dry out those juices, and we definitely don't want that. We want a juicy tomato. Okay, looking pretty good. Now that my tomatoes are done, I'm just gonna leave them here to hang out while I prepare my pasta. All right, very important. Please promise me you won't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? Just promise me. I'm gonna salt it, and now I'm gonna add my pasta. Straight in there. And while this pasta is cooking, I bet that I can make the sauce in the time it takes for it to be done. All you need is a blender to make this super creamy sauce. So if you've ever made a smoothie and you have a blender at home, you can make this pasta sauce. So the base of it is our avocados. I'm using an avocado and a half for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Just slicing my avocados, making sure I also don't slice my finger in there. All right, we're gonna scoop some of this avocado out. Look at how ripe and pretty that is. Go straight in there. I'm gonna put this. This avocado is what's gonna add that super creamy element to this pasta. Now I'm gonna move on to my lemon, adding the juice of one full lemon in here. Make sure I catch all the seeds. This lemon is gonna really make it tart and acidic and bring out that zing, make it very bright and fresh. I'm gonna add some fresh basil and raw garlic. Yes, I'm using raw. It's gonna be really punchy and really bright. And I love garlic. There we go. A Little bit of olive oil. Just a bit. And now I'm gonna season it to taste with some salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Salt in there. Add as much chili flakes as you'd like. I love spice, so I'm going in with a lot. But you make your own choices, okay? Now, just to help everything get moving in the blender, we're gonna add a little bit of cold water. Make sure it's cold because we don't wanna brown the avocado. Just a bit, and I can add more and adjust to get it to the right consistency that I like. Now, it's time to blend. Perfect. It is so luxe, you will not even believe it. Look at that. So creamy. Did you see that? I made that pasta sauce and my pasta is done. Super quick. We love a blender recipe. Now I'm just gonna spoon my pasta out. Before I add this creamy sauce to my pasta, I'm gonna grab one more thing. Just grab some arugula from the fridge. I love adding this to this pasta because it gives this really nice peppery bite to it. All right, time to assemble. Got my sauce. Gonna add this into my pasta. You might think you put cream in this, but you didn't, I promise. I'm just gonna really stir that in. I'm gonna add my tomatoes. Just a little burst of something sweet in with this avocado cream sauce. Now I'm just gonna mix in my arugula. What's great about this pasta as well is that you can eat it immediately, but you can also refrigerate it to have as a pasta salad the next day. We love a leftover. We love a meal prep situation. This is both of these. All right, time for me to plate this for myself. Is that too much? It's never too much. <laughs> what is a portion? <laughs> I have my tomatoes that I reserved just for this moment. Place them on top. Make it look really nice, a little pop of color. And now, some freshly ground black pepper and a pinch of flaky sea salt. That is it. But one last thing, can't forget to take a photo. I didn't do all of this for nothing. I love this. I'm gonna frame this. I'm gonna put this on my wall. I think it's fair to say that it's time for me to eat. Okay, here I go. Gotta get some arugula. 
some pasta in there. Okay. Mmm. I love myself. <laughs> it's so creamy, you honestly would never know that there's no cream or butter in this. It's crazy. We are so used to thinking of using avocado in savory recipes, but plot twist, they're amazing in sweet recipes too, especially when chocolate is involved. And that is where my avocado brownies come in. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and now I'm gonna prepare my pan. I love parchment paper, I live for parchment paper. I've already greased my pan here with some coconut oil, and now I've created a little strip of paper that I can just lay in to my pan. Stick it down because the coconut oil really helps it stick. And then I've created these nice little flaps which are gonna make it super easy to remove the brownies from the pan when they're done baking. I've got great news. For you and for these brownies, everything comes together in a blender. Like you could make a smoothie, but don't. Make these brownies instead. All right. We're starting with my avocado, the star of my show. I'm gonna slice this in half. Great way to use avocados when you're sick of the guacamole, when you're sick of all the savory things that you've been making with it. What's really nice about using an avocado in this brownie recipe is that it's super creamy and rich, so it actually serves as a really nice butter replacement and you cannot even taste it. I promise. All right, avocado is in. Time for the rest of my ingredients. I'm using two eggs here. Park that straight in there. And now I'm gonna add some creamy peanut butter. You can definitely use an almond butter if you like, but I love peanut butter. So we're starting with all of our wet ingredients first. Gonna sweeten this up with some maple syrup and some coconut sugar as well. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. So now I'm just gonna blend everything together here and then get to work on my dry ingredients later. I'm using an almond flour for this recipe because I think it's really nice and dense and cakey, which is gonna be really delicious with these brownies. Add my almond flour in there. Now, we're gonna use a cocoa powder. Make sure you get an unsweetened cocoa or a cacao powder. We want it to be really pure here with nothing added because we've already sweetened it with some coconut sugar and maple. Oh. Now some baking soda. Isn't it so convenient? Like, just a blender and brownies are the result? Sign me up. A Little bit of salt. 
This is gonna be really nice to bring out that sweetness and also balance out that chocolate. And now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna blend. You may need to scrape down the size of the blender to get it there, but just be patient with yourself and your blender. All right, we're looking really good. Now, I like a little bit of a sweeter brownie, so I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. You don't have to do this if you don't want, but if you like joy and happiness, I would highly recommend it. I'm gonna reserve a few chips on top before baking so we can just get that nice aesthetic before it goes into the oven. You know how I operate. I'm gonna fold this in. How easy was this? Can we take a moment to address how easy this is? And now all I'm gonna do is transfer it into my pan, which I've prepared already. Look at that. You would never know there was an avocado in here. We put a whole fruit in these brownies and you can't even taste it, I promise. I smooth the batter out in the pan. Make sure it's evenly distributed. That looks pretty good. And now for my chocolate chips, Gonna add them on top. Less is not more here. That's my philosophy when it comes to chocolate. Less is just not more. In fact, more is more. All right, so now we're ready for the oven. and they are done. You can tell that the brownies are done when they start to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit and a knife inserted in the center comes out clean. I'm so excited about this. And again, I love parchment paper. This is so easy. I'm just gonna lift them straight out of the pan like this. Pretty good form, huh? I'm gonna slice these, big piece for myself. I'm gonna top it with some ice cream and peanut butter because I love myself and I deserve this. It's such a clean cut too. Who needs a gym, <laughs> right? <laughs> I need a bigger scoop. <laughs> All right. And now I'm just gonna top it with a little peanut butter drizzle. I just melted this in the microwave for a little bit so it gets nice and melty and easier to drizzle. I think this looks perfect. Pretty good. Now, last step. Just gonna top it with a little bit of flaky sea salt. Partially for taste, partially for aesthetics. I just have to take a picture of this. I need to document it. It looks too good not to. Okay. That little drip right there? Is that a joke? Okay, now I need to try this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna just leave. <laughs> it's so crazy, there's no butter or oil in these brownies, but they taste so decadent and rich. Who gave me permission to do this? Avocado really came through today.
Lunch is sort of that lost meal in between breakfast and dinner where you don't really know what quite to do with yourself. So in order to make your lunch exciting, I'm gonna hashtag end sad desk lunches and show you two of my favorites. First up, I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious spiced breaded cauliflower poppers and my favorite savory oatmeal with caramelized onions. To be honest, cauliflower is truly in everything these days. We see it in pizza, we see it in pasta, it's probably in ice cream, I don't wanna know about it. But the best way to use cauliflower is in these cauliflower poppers because you know what? They can literally do it all. They're a great snack, a great appetizer, and a yummy lunch, especially when paired with a delicious salad. The key to the cauliflower poppers, it's in the almond meal. Make sure you're buying the one with the skin still on the almonds. I find this adheres a lot better to the cauliflower, making it really nice and crispy. I want this breading to be super flavorful on its own. I don't want it to just act as a sidekick. So I'm gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add my almond meal straight into my bowl. And then I'm adding my favorite spices, some cayenne, some cumin, and some turmeric. Finally, we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. Now, time to just whisk everything together. The turmeric's gonna give it a really nice color as well. It's gonna be really nice and yellow and pretty. It's gonna make this cauliflower glamorous. Make sure it's really well incorporated. All right, this looks really nice. Now I'm gonna whisk up some eggs. I'm using two eggs here. We need something for the breading to stick to, so that's why we're gonna make this little egg bath situation. Perfect. Whisk that up. Okay, this looks pretty good. And this is my favorite part, we get to assemble. So I have half a head of cauliflower cut up into florets, and now I get to just assemble. You see my tongs, my favorite kitchen tool. Gonna stick this straight into the eggs. Roll that around nicely. You want it to be fully coated. Let any of that excess egg just drip off. We want a nice even coating, so that's why we're doing this. And then it's gonna go straight into our almond meal mixture. Let the breading really coat the cauliflower well. We want it all over the cauliflower into all the little nooks and crannies. And now, just gonna transfer straight to our parchment lined pan. See how easy that was? That's crazy, that was so easy. We can all do this. And now I'm just gonna repeat with all of the other cauliflower florets. Make sure you're shaking that excess almond meal off as well. We want a nice, even coating. Pop that straight on the sheet. These are sort of like cauliflower wings. So if you're plant-based, if you're vegetarian, even if you're not, it's kind of a fun and new way to get a veggie in your life. You can also totally use your hands for this. I'm being very neat and clean today. I don't want to crowd anyone on my pan here, so this is going to be my first batch. I'm so excited for these to get into the oven. I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes until they're nice and golden and crispy. Well, they're ready. Just FYI, I did flip them once halfway through baking so we can get that nice and even crispness on both sides. I really like to pair this with a variety of sauces. I like to have a sauce flight, a lot of choices here. You can really use whatever you'd like, whatever sauce suits your mood. It's also really great if you wanna eat it solo. I mean, this is what I do at home, so I actually eat them straight off the pan. It's a fact. It just is this really gorgeous almond-crusted exterior. Oh, it's so good. There is really nothing this cauliflower cannot do. I'll stand by that forever. Oh, I have to take a picture. I mean, come on. They're begging to be dipped and snacked on. I'm going in. So good. Mmm. That masala on the breading, it's spicy, it's flavorful, and I'm like eating a vegetable. Like, what? 
You never know. When you think of oatmeal, you're probably thinking, wow, that's such a breakfast move. But I have to disagree because oats are actually the perfect base for anything savory and grounding and delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make my really hearty, savory turmeric oatmeal with caramelized onions, avocado, and egg and peppery arugula. It is so good. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is caramelize my onions because that's gonna take the most amount of time. So I'm just gonna dice them up right now. If I cry, it's not because the onions. It's because I'm really excited to make this, just so we're clear. I'm just gonna heat some olive oil in my pan and start on this caramelization. Adding some olive oil. Now that the oil is shimmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions. Caramelizing the onions is gonna create this really nice full-bodied flavor. It's also gonna add a little sweetness. So oats themselves don't really have a lot of flavor. So by adding all of these different elements, we're really gonna create our own flavor profile here. We're gonna let these caramelize for about 15 to 20 minutes so it gets a really nice deep golden color and then we're gonna to get to work on our oatmeal. What's really great about caramelized onions is that you can make them in a huge batch, freeze them so you'll always have some on hand. I'm gonna let these hang out, get really delicious and caramelized, and I'm gonna go grab some of my greens. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. Can you even believe these onions? They look so good. They smell even better, if you can believe it. And now, I'm just gonna upgrade them a bit with some of my favorite spices. I'm gonna add my cumin straight in here. And then my turmeric. And I really just wanna toast the spices in with the caramelized onions so they become nice and fragrant and any of that raw spice smell goes away. And finally, can't forget them, my salt and pepper. I'm gonna just roast these for a few minutes until they smell really fragrant and aromatic and then we're gonna move on to my oats. Now it's time to cook my oats. I'm actually going to be using vegetable broth to cook them in. You can totally use water if you'd like, but I find that veggie broth makes it a lot more flavorful. I'm using rolled oats here, just by the way. Give it a little stir, bring it to a boil, and let the oats absorb all of that liquid. We're boiling. Make sure you stir the oats while you cook them. This is a really aggressive boil. The liquid is reducing, the oats are thickening up. I'm gonna reduce the heat. 
Now, because you have so many savory and grounding flavors here, I want something a bit fresh, a little peppery bite, and that is where my arugula comes in. I'm just gonna stir in a handful here. You can choose however much you wanna add. I like a lot of arugula, so I'm gonna kinda go for it. You just want it to wilt, and then we're gonna take it off the heat. Now, it is time for my caramelized onions. You thought I forgot about them. How could I ever forget about them? Gonna add them straight into my oatmeal. Give that a nice stir so everyone becomes friends. Now I'm just gonna remove it from the heat and add all of my toppings. Okay, now I'm just gonna transfer my oatmeal to my bowl. Can't leave any oats behind, that'd be so rude. I mean this color though. Gotta give some props to my turmeric. Really making that magic happen. I'm adding a few things here. I like having a lot of textural elements here, so I'm gonna add some creamy avocado. It's gonna contrast those oats really nicely. I'm gonna add an egg, soft boiled egg, and maybe some more greens. We'll see how I'm feeling. Just gonna slice my avocado. First, I wanna just take a moment. Okay. These are kind of fat slices. I will say I didn't intend to make them this, like, chunky, but you know what? I'm just lunching at home. This is real life. The avocado doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm gonna add my egg. I'm using a soft boiled egg here. I mean, I, do I need to say anything? I'm just not. I'm gonna let that speak for itself. Little salt. All right. Little pep. And finally, to finish it all off, some herbs. I'm using some cilantro here, but if cilantro freaks you out, you don't like it, I know it scares a lot of people, and that's okay. Like, that's totally fine. Use parsley, omit it, whatever you wanna do. I'm not gonna judge you. This looks like a pretty fat lunch. She's stunning. Um, you know who's gonna be jealous? Basically all of my friends, so I'm gonna have to send a picture to them, show them how cute my lunch is. Maybe it'll inspire them to make their own cute lunch. Okay, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to taste it. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of everything, some of those oats, the onions, the avocado, the egg. Mmm. I wanna congratulate us all because we can now say goodbye to sad desk lunches forever. Good Thursday morning. That sub surge at its most critical stage yet this morning. Rescue crews nearly out of time. It is June the 22nd.